Hello everyone, uh, welcome, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, or you know, uh, wherever you are. And uh, on a nice Sunday, we have uh, a very interesting day, uh, day two of the Magnus Carlsen Invitational Chess Tournament. Uh, hello everyone, those who are joining and uh, thanks Mr. Doji for raiding uh, the channel, um, you know, and thank you very much and uh, everyone joining. So we'll just wait and uh, I came, uh, we started a little bit earlier before the round as uh, I would like to uh, thank all the uh, viewers who uh, stayed with, uh, with the channel and interacted and uh, also we have two special guests today. Uh, uh, one of them will be joining uh, pretty soon. Uh, we, uh, I would, uh, I, uh, I will. Uh, he's he's going to join uh, in like couple of minutes, uh, probably two minutes or so. Uh, so uh, before starting there, I uh, before uh, introducing the guest. Uh, today we are not going to jump uh, from game to game like as I did yesterday at the start. So we are going to stay uh, on particular games so that we can uh, analyze and we can uh, uh, talk about it. And uh, of course, uh, uh, Christoph is uh, here. Um, so I uh, I wanted to keep it as a surprise, but uh, already everyone uh, knew that he's going to uh, join me. And um, so before uh, inviting him uh, to the stream, I want to introduce uh, Christoph. Uh, uh, before saying some words about him, uh, I want to tell a story uh, as uh, he, prob he probably he himself do not know about it. Uh, before I, uh, I was asked to make the course, the first course uh, which was given as an example to, uh, you know, understand how it works at Chessable. Uh, it was Christoph's uh, course. Uh, keep it simple. One e4. I still remember the. You know, I studied uh, the course to understand how to make uh, the courses at Chessable. So he has made uh, numerous uh, courses on Chessable. Uh, three books and uh, international master. Uh, international master from Germany. And uh, I really like the way he uh, he explains uh, uh, chess uh, fundamentals in a very simple way, just like how uh, he uh, he wrote the books. And without uh, you know uh, talking me more, uh, let me uh, let me welcome uh, Christoph uh, Siletsky, uh, Grandmaster from uh, International Master from Germany. Uh, hello, Christoph. Harry, thank you for having me on the show. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Yeah, we already have the games going, right? We're just just in time. Is that the first round today? I think it is, right? Uh, yeah, today is uh, is at five p.m. But uh, it's no problem. We can talk about. Uh, you know, I want to ask so many questions. I mean, we can probably just take a look at the games like few minutes, but. Uh, we heard the spring sale on Chessable is back, so uh, yeah. we we want to talk about that and uh, which all courses of yours are on sale, uh, so that you know I want the viewers to go and buy your courses. So I I, I want to know which one, <laughs> which of them are on uh, sale. I think I think actually all of them. Okay. I think all of them. Maybe not. I have a I have a, my very first course on Chessable is from 2016 like ages ago by modern standards mm -hmm. this may be not because it um is not um it doesn't have video and so on it's not really like the the newer courses i didn't know that you had my keep it simple e4 as a like like a blueprint at let's say how to do it technically uh, so i hope it it helped yeah you have to get used to the way chess works i guess absolutely absolutely uh as you uh uh, the way uh, uh, chess professionals uh, analyze and some of the variations are perhaps not uh, necessary to include them or perhaps uh, doesn't need so much of explanation. But when I saw the, uh, your course, I did realize that uh, certain moves need uh, needs, uh, you know, a little more uh, detail in details and to 
uh, explained further so it was really nice it was uh, really nice and also it, it was uh, uh, later made a book and uh, that uh, the book won uh, book of the year award right that's true yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It, it, it did that was a it was a, on a on a chess um, book uh, forum they had a, a vote for book of the year and uh, it won that award that was was very nice it's also what you say is you really have to make sure that you get the for any course any publication any video you need to think about the audience yeah what what do they really need what is maybe too much and what is too little it has to be a good a good balance and i think that it's also really helpful if you write multiple courses over the years you just um get better at it in some way i mean i think you have released the second course uh, last yes time. yes that that is correct i i uh, i have released two courses uh, one in 2019 one in 2020 uh, the diamond of sicilian uh, was released uh, last last november and um, uh, how did you uh, come to the idea of uh, making courses because uh, I lit, uh, read a little bit about you and uh, you had a normal job until 2013 and then uh, you uh, started to you know train and uh, also started a channel at uh, YouTube uh, so it's a very interesting uh, uh, point of view and I'm sure there are many people who would like to know uh, how you came to the idea of uh, in, uh, to train and to make courses and uh, keep it uh, simple, you know, to keep the chess fundamentals simple yet effective. Yeah, <clears throat> I can tell a little bit of my about my own history. I had a, a regular office job, like a typical nine to five, go to the office and do your things kind of job for many years until um, 2014. But um, at the time, the company I was working for was um, in a crisis and they had to lay off many um, employees. And when uh, that was um, imminent, I was thinking about, look, logically, what to do? Where should I try mm -hmm. to um, like stick in that company as long as possible? Or There were various options. And of course, I was always thinking about, can I do something with chess? Maybe like everybody or ma many people probably do if they are. Um, have this this thought and I was thinking okay uh, if I'm not trying this then I will never try it right it was kind of a now or never thing so I felt let, let's let try it if, if it works and I started out as a teacher mostly I had um, students um, online training mostly but also over the board and um, the, the chessable part of it only came a little bit later in 2016 Mm -hmm. Because I am during the chess teaching, somehow I got into contact with John Bartholomew, who is the co founder of Chessable. Yeah. And um, at the time, John was new to, new to YouTube, right? And I told him a little bit about YouTube things because I had more experience there. And he gave me some info how to do chess teaching online. So we helped each other out a little bit. Mm -hmm. John um, had um, this, this founding. Um, the, the 2016 um, Chessable was founded. John and David Cremley did that, and they they looked for authors. And yeah, well, they asked me. <laughs> like, excellent, yeah. excellent. I I think uh, it was a perfect match, uh, and uh, certainly we uh, I appreciate your honesty about the uh, the part where uh, your company was not doing well and uh, you know the way uh, it it kind of pushed you into uh, come to chess and start the courses so it's good news uh, shall we uh, quickly check uh, on some games uh, perhaps this game uh, as uh, we started with uh, one b3 so um, uh, in my understanding that uh, uh, Jan is uh, not uh, so keen on showing his preparation for the upcom uh, upcoming candidates. As I saw yesterday, he was playing modern defense and uh, he was not really playing the main, uh, main openings, which he usually does it. Uh, and uh, here we see uh, uh, B3, uh, A5. Uh, which actually happened. Uh, I even annotated a game for uh, Informat. Uh, I think four, four or five years ago. 
bit the game was between uh, Ahmad Adli and uh, Richard Rap Richard Rapport and Ahmad Adli. I think I, I was I'm not entirely sure, but uh, I should check that once again. So b3 a5 uh, e4 a4 and uh, b4 uh, was the move which was played by uh, Richard uh, in that event. But uh, here we see bishop b2. Uh, is this modern chess? <laughs> I mean, I am sure that uh, in maybe some years ago, if, uh, if uh, your student plays like this, what would you tell your student? <laughs> yeah, it's a tricky one. Yeah, <laughs> top, top players like like those two. I mean, you cannot really blame White. Yeah, B three is a bit exotic, but not terrible. But A five looks looks pretty odd. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can say that um, White didn't didn't play very aggressively with B three. So yes. you have some leeway. It's not like they put a pawn in the center and are very aggressive. But it's it's difficult to explain, right? I think one point maybe to make is that this a5, a4 is kind of disturbing white a little bit. So mm -hmm. a move like maybe knight c3 wouldn't work all that well due to a3. You have to worry about this a little bit. And notably after a4 was on the board by black, um, black started to develop. So you cannot continue like that forever, right? You yeah. <laughs> do a little bit of uh, yeah, a little bit of funny stuff, but then you have to get pieces out. Sure, uh, and uh, I just want to uh, welcome all the people who are joining right now. Hello, everyone. Hello, Doctor Chess Joker, Oligarch, uh, Wing Padma. That's actually my mother. <laughs> so, yeah. Monstab Musik and uh, Namaskar. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, definitely this is a very important point uh, that uh, Black would like to get this uh, move a3 and uh, that's the reason uh, I think maybe here knight c, no, now knight c3 is not possible, yeah. So b4 maybe is is the way, I, I don't know, uh, and uh, here after e6, b takes a4, it looks very strange to me, but... Uh, yeah, White is not happy about the pawn uh, Yeah, maybe hopes to <clears throat> gain a bit of time because yeah. Black might take on a4. It's very, it's a very odd position. It's a kind of game that I, um, if I'm teaching somebody, I kind of hide it from them. Like <laughs> look at that, that could be dangerous. <laughs> So, uh, so this opening would never uh, feature in your courses, right? <laughs> yeah, probably not. I mean, honestly, with a5, I, I have played in blitz chess because right. it's not so terrible and yeah. if it's not so important a game, why not have a little bit of fun? You don't have to be yeah. Um, yeah, super serious all the time. Um, notably, both players are leading the candidates tournament that mm -hmm. has postponed or um, interrupted. Mm -hmm. So they both don't want to show anything, right? So and that is yeah. a perfect opening for that because that will not happen in the candidate's turn. Yeah, I think uh, we are certainly not going to see this uh, variation at the candidates. That that is something I can I can be hundred percent sure of. Uh, so sub uh, swap for press is uh, hi to you and me. So hello. Uh, I I don't know if you have the chat. Uh, if you. Probably don't. Um, uh, um, okay, so it's good to have because some of uh, your fans maybe ask some questions, you know. Oh, sure, I can do that. I just have to make sure that yeah, I have to adjust a little bit on the... And, uh, okay, I, I will just briefly look at this game. Uh, knight b6, knight c3. I don't really like what black did here either. Um, but uh, I mean, B takes A4 looks really strange and we reach some strange position. I mean, these are all random moves. Um, it's hard to explain uh, the idea behind each of, each of these moves. So I, I will just go quickly to the last position and they are playing so fast as if this is like uh, the obvious moves. Uh, to me, I don't understand. Uh, meanwhile, I would like to mention that uh, Timu Rajabo and Hikaru Nakamura drew. So, uh, the position which uh, is on their board is some um, kind of Queen's Gambit declined, uh, which is not relevant to the series, and uh, it's more of uh, uh, known uh, known draw variation actually. Uh... 
I think I've played exactly the same game. Yes, the, yes, definitely. Like once uh, when I just like wanted to be super safe. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, shall we just take a look uh, at so Wesley uh, Levon Aronian. Uh, so usually Wesley doesn't lose uh, from any color, but he lost two games yesterday with white pieces. And uh, uh, that's something which is unusual. And here we see uh, a crazy position. I normally do not see Wesley going for uh, such kind of positions. He usually, uh, you know, outplays his opponent in a positional and simple way. But uh, here we are seeing some uh, crazy game. Uh, from uh, At first glance, I do like White's position. Uh, I do not know. Uh, I, I mean, even though uh, he's a piece down, I think, uh, uh, I mean, I'm just, I like drawing arrows, so excuse yeah, me yeah. for that. Uh, so just uh, the development of uh, White's pieces are pretty nice here. And uh, so do you like uh, material or? If you just look at the pieces in play, White has extra material in a way, yeah, because there's <laughs> okay. <laughs> on a eight, it's not doing much. The knight on the eight is not doing much. I mean, this can be temporary if they get into play. Mm -hmm. Organizes, but if you check at what's on the board, like the knight on g seven, for example, is very weirdly placed. So it's yeah difficult for black to play. Yeah, uh, uh... surprised about this opening because. The whole line is is very exotic, actually. Yeah, this is. Cool. Yes, uh, uh, Bishop G five, H six, and Bishop H four. Okay, and uh, D takes C four. I don't recall the theory here so well, but I, I'm not sure. I I think maybe it is C five here. I I, I don't re recall here but actually. White normally never plays this. Yeah, actually, it's a very yeah. So, so usually the the queen is on d1 and uh, black hasn't castled. So usually we see such positions, but uh, we have this uh, queen c2 uh, short castle included. So yeah, what... it's super sharp. I'm a little bit surprised that such a sharp line is is featured in this event. Often they <laughs> they um, yeah often they play not their super important stuff absolutely have... absolutely this is an online event rapid event so why should they go for some but uh, perhaps they don't mind uh, mind playing out all the all their important ideas in this uh, event and uh, d takes e4 uh, e4 and uh, g5 wow I mean, all the ideas are known from these positions, but the current mix is a little bit, yeah? Yes. Black Castle, for example, that, that's not so often. And then, yeah. No, uh, definitely. Uh, I don't know. I mean, this is a very strange position to me. And uh, the fact that this bishop is on b4 and uh, black has castle and to play g5, I will be really scared to play such, such things. Bishop g3, b5. I mean, Wesley has has a very bad tournament standing at the moment, right? Right. For these standards, he's usually, he won the last tournament, right? He, he yeah, bad. usually he either wins or uh, loses in semifinals or finals. I mean, he yeah. has always qualified for the knockouts, unless I am wrong, uh, you know, somehow. I mean, he has to risk something, and I'm not sure yeah. what Levon's position is. I actually was super busy yesterday, so I didn't didn't uh, see anything. Uh, Levon is uh, on uh, second uh, second position sharing uh, or sharing with Magnus, I think. Uh, is that correct? Hello, uh, Red Gryffinder, please. Uh, we don't, I don't really have the standings, but I can check for you. I, I knew uh, that Wesley didn't do well, as you said it before, but I wasn't sure what Levon... Yeah, uh, Aronian uh, is uh, sh uh, sharing uh, second place with uh, Magnus Carlsen. So yeah, I, 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 I saw just the standings. And uh, here we will just go to the position where uh, we ended up. Knight h5, queen e4, queen d5. <laughs> so of course knight d5 is not possible. And uh, queen g4. Knight g7. So it's it's uh, this is really necessary. Yeah, I I I don't I don't really see. Yeah, with black, but okay. Um, 
I think uh, everyone is scared here with black, <laughs> except Levon, <laughs> except Levon. No, this is a really scary position. Knight g7 and bishop e2. He goes f5. Yeah, I guess yeah, f5 takes an e5, right? Trapped the queen? Yes, yes, absolutely. He takes f6, e5, and the uh, queen is trapped on uh, g4. Yeah, that's uh, that's the idea. So, of course, uh, queen h3 is kind of uh, necessary. And then we have g4. Queen takes h6. G takes f3. Bishop f3 and queen d4. Crazy game. I, 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 to be honest, I didn't, I did not understand any, <laughs> any move section in this particular game. You know what would be helpful there if we would have had uh, actually the camera, uh, sorry, the camera. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if... Because is it imaginable that Wesley blundered that piece? Um, I mean, I think he did because uh, seeing from the time uh, times which we see on uh, on uh, here, I think uh, he might have blundered it. I mean, it's the thing is the position is not clear at all. Maybe it's an ingenious preparation, but it could have happened, right? Sometimes, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you see it on the yeah. Field. If if we can get the cameras, we will surely get it. Uh, perhaps a small issue, but uh, yeah. Uh, I I I I think he blundered, but his position was perhaps so good. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, you know. So queen queen b six. Actually, I quite like also knight knight to e two. Uh to quickly get knight f four knight g six. It seems also quite dangerous. I mean, this is uh, like I I have an extra tempo for uh, uh by playing uh, knight e two. Wow. Okay, now I changed my mind. It is definitely some different Wesley which we are seeing right now. It's 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 uh, it's definitely yeah. What is this? Isn't isn't white? I mean, at first glance, you think white's just winning, right? Yes, white. yes, absolutely. So um, I don't see any other move apart from f e four because knight to g five is a huge threat and uh, f takes e four. Bishop takes e4. So, of course, bishop h7, queen g, queen f6. Okay, so I I will just uh, illustrate the mate. Just uh, you know, king to e8 is forced. Bishop g6, rook f7, and queen takes f. Oh, I should not mate on this because uh, sometimes I I can't get the auto update. So anyway, <laughs> so bishop e4. Uh, if knight Five. What's the move here? How do we win this? Yeah, it looks totally. Uh, Queen g six check. Maybe we should just take uh, just to have this here. Uh, bishop h four is an option here because after knight takes h four, queen h seven checkmate, and uh, so let's see what happens after bishop h four. This looks like lost. Unless we are missing something, this uh, this game is lost, I think. For, for yeah, not, not so difficult to figure out because, I mean, black has all those pieces that are totally irrelevant. Yeah, yes. Just... What what are these pieces doing? I mean, uh, he's, black is two pieces up here and uh, yeah, I, I, I can't see uh, I can't see a defense because bishop f6, uh, queen takes f6, rook to d8. Uh, it's maybe knight d7 he has to play but i mean all kinds of moves yeah queen e6 yeah this is super complicated let's stay here do we have any updates i uh yeah we don't have okay we can uh we can stay here i don't think uh, uh we have something uh interesting going on do we have Absolutely smashing. Yeah, I mean, it looks. This is uh, incredible. This is incredible. We uh, we see a fantastic. Uh, sometimes Levon uh, does this. Like uh, he probably lost a uh, sense of danger. At, maybe because he uh, Wesley was doing. Uh, Wesley lost two games from White yesterday, and uh, Levon is doing well. Is, could it be that? Um, to me, this whole thing looks like a really reckless kind of play, you know, to, to allow this. Okay, so we have bishop e4. 
rook f5 so we have rook f5 that's the move that's what that's what although i i hardly think it changes uh much uh so how do we kill this then uh, it's, uh... Uh, so let's say i i mean the logical move here is bishop f5 he takes f5 okay it's it's on the board what about e6 here first thing yeah to, to get the bishop yeah so this is the idea to get this bishop out of course bishop h4 is the second choice we have to consider but we need to show you uh, our audience like you know what is the first choice of uh, the players and uh, if this doesn't work in their calculation then they will uh, think on how uh, how to you know improve or or find another alternative um so when uh, when you are ma uh, making courses uh, how do you tell your students like don't calculate it simultaneously like two moves you know quite often you uh, it happens like uh, you think about over a move for 30 minutes and then you make another move just uh, without thinking you know it, it happens to i think every player not just uh, amateurs but almost all the top players at some point has done this like uh, you want to make some move work so badly and then uh, you get so frustrated or uh, you get irritated you just make a random move did it ever happen or you uh, suggested something to your students or you know uh, well, see i don't have a great idea how to get rid of this thing happening okay it, it does it does happen sometimes i mean if you are teaching do you do you also teach do you have students no not really not really this uh, i observed when i was playing actually this happened to me uh, when i was uh, young and uh, that's something which i try to uh, eliminate from uh, happening because it's really uh, annoying and it is out of our control you know when, when we are in the game and we are deeply into the game and often we forget everything and then it just happens just by uh, like uh, it's it's like blank i don't know i don't know how to improve but i only know that it happens what, what i usually say is like from my own experience i am personally um in my classical time control games i'm playing quite fast i, I rarely get into time trouble yes i'm also more of a fan of faster time controls in general okay so i'm not really for my own games it doesn't happen so much and what I also um, tell my students usually is to try to, I'm not saying blitz the classical game, right? Yeah. Try to play somewhat fast so that you have a little bit of time reserved, that you're not getting into huge time trouble. And rather make, um, I should turn up my microphone volume and said, I don't know cannot really do much about that it should be fine no no i think uh, i think it's uh, it's fine i can hear uh, i can hear pretty well but uh... i'm i'm usually advocating to if possible sometimes it's difficult but if possible make good moves quickly and not try to find perfect moves yeah i think that's uh, that's a very uh, good suggestion for uh, those who are uh, having an issue of thinking over a particular move especially this uh, a long thing and not uh, not able to uh, understand what to do and then making uh, some random move it's a very uh, important advice uh, so also uh, christoph and i played in the same team for chessable at the uh, 4ncl it just happened uh, online last year and we won the tour, uh, event right uh, the online one so yeah i saw that you were always playing uh, quick i mean it was uh, it was uh, not like a classical time control at the same time uh, not rapid perhaps it was like 45 minutes or something 45 right five plus an increment that's yeah it. yeah yeah um I, honestly i was um, in those in those games i was often actually quite lucky to get something on the board yeah. <laughs> that okay. i had um, examined for my courses that is really i, I always play almost always play in those events what i'm currently analyzing yeah um, so it's what i know reasonably well and it's also funny to try out you just want mm -hmm. to try out the things sure. and sometimes i just uh, i had one game where which i had completely in my notes like from start to finish and excellent uh so we have uh, uh currently on the board uh easy uh, until here 
so e7 has been played so we have we had this no e7 hasn't been played I, I that's my move actually yeah e7 uh, but on the other hand i do not see uh ah he can play king queen g6 as well but maybe because after queen takes e6 rook d8 is checkmate and um, what do we do bishop takes e6 check uh, immediately hmm yeah it's so many pieces here and everything is hanging i i think uh, maybe just queen is queen e8 king h7 and uh, maybe uh i need the rook uh here yeah so let's yeah. say rook e1 stops rook d3 otherwise yes this is also a tempo on his yeah i would uh, which which side would you prefer to play on uh, not here exactly but uh, um, i want to ask after uh, in the as happened in the game so we reach this position and we have e7 on the board okay i did you want to hear a fun fun little uh, anecdote i mean one sure. of the things that I um, somehow um, tell my students quite often, and it's it's, it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but um, I, I say that you should never play b5 and g5 in the same game. <laughs> because then you never have a good king, you know? Yeah. Which is a little bit, I mean, there are opening variations where it's okay, right? Actually, but... anti Moscow, uh, yeah. I mean, the b5, g5 happens, but yeah, you are absolutely right on a general principle. Do not play b5, g5 because uh, your king uh, is not kind of safe. You have to at least know what you're doing, right? You yeah, absolutely. Abandoning the idea of a pawn shield and you just have to defend with pieces. Like, I mean, Livon's king on g8 is not a happy camper. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, if you count material wise, uh, definitely black uh, is up, right? Uh, if we see white has rook and uh, how many pawns? Let me count. Oh, okay. It's actually just one pawn. So rook plus pawn and uh, black has three pieces. So that way uh, black is materially up. But uh, as you mentioned earlier, these three pieces are uh, kind of sleeping. <laughs> sleeping there. Yeah, time is ticking down. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Getting, it gets dramatic. A queen d8, perhaps. Uh, Lady seven, right? This is on the board. Already. Yeah, yeah. This is on the board. I'm just making uh, queen h6. What else can he do? So queen h8, king, queen, and uh, yeah, I, I think uh, king h7 or something. Just queen c8. Um, black, black, most likely. Uh, has to give up uh, another piece because after something like queen c6, queen f5, it, the, the attack continues. It's it's uh, it's still not uh, finished. You know it, the attack just continues. So I I don't know what is the move uh, here after uh, e7. Uh, to be honest, um, I would like to play bishop d7 here. Queen h oh we have it. Okay, queen h5, queen c6 has been played. So after a move like rook d7, knight takes d7, e8 queen, rook takes e8, queen takes e8, and uh, what is this? Oh wow! Yeah, okay. King, uh, the king. Uh, there's rook d1 coming, right? Actually, king h7 is really necessary here. After something like bishop f8 you are right rook b1 and uh, the knight cannot go uh, either to b b8 or e5 as it it must defend the c6 uh, c6 uh, queen so yeah king h7 uh, is indeed uh, necessary and after rook d1 here of course you can go knight to e5 then probably black is doing well maybe i'm not i'm still not sure you know this looks so complicated and uh maybe h5 but i mean yeah queen h5 yeah queen someone h... gets knight d3 and right then then it... exactly yeah yeah but probably uh white can just repeat the moves or you know try to keep the queens because if uh, white exchange the queens then just knight d3 uh, b4 c3 and uh, this looks uh, dangerous yeah um so what do we have here uh, 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 
after bishop d7. Is there any? If you just play rook f e1, maybe and. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that uh, is definitely some, my second. Uh, like if rook b7, I don't see anything clear. I was I want to see what happens after this. So idea is e8. So um, can I play bishop e8 or yeah, bishop to e8. Yeah, rook d8 probably and yes, knight a6 is kind of forced. I don't see any other move. Yeah, and I mean it. It looks like there should be something, right? <laughs> yes. So this is this is feeling, uh, guys. So we don't know exactly if it's winning, but we feel something is uh, not right. So rook e6. I is is this winning? I I think it's just winning. I don't see anything doesn't have many moves and the queen is attacked if you take rook takes c8 it's, it's just game over yeah? yeah so i see some move like queen d7 um but uh just rook x d7 yes bishop h5 you can ah, rook... take the rook on a8 i think yeah uh, sorry uh here and there's can you... No, no, yeah, you are right. You are absolutely right. You can take this because uh, there is no checkmate here on uh, d1. Absolutely right. Um, so after queen takes e8, uh, queen, sorry, queen takes e6, rook e8, and uh, white is winning. So, yeah, crazy, crazy position. And Wesley has uh, uh, important has an important decision to make here as uh, rook f e1 or bishop uh, rook takes d7. I personally prefer uh, rook f e1. I think uh, this is this is good. Looks good. Yeah. Uh, it looks good. I think where you probably want to make sure that you see the win, yeah, not yep. something yep. like okay, that looks good, right? But um, you want a mathematical win in your hands. So Any played rook e1, it, it makes sense also from a general point of view to invite everybody to the party, as you say. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, it happened. Oh, they have it on the board. I think exactly. What What do we have on the board? Yeah, I think exactly. Oh yes. So. Excellent, Christoph. Without engine, we did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, honestly, it's, I think it's good when you do the commentary, right? Yes. You never use the computer. Yeah. Only to check maybe if you're completely lost and you don't understand anything, and then you can have a look maybe, but. It's always good to not have this thing on and, and, yeah. and tell you everything. Yeah, just yeah. Anyway, we have chat. If we miss something, uh, something uh, you know, this like uh, obvious blunder or some crazy blunder, uh, of course we will be notified by chat. Um, but otherwise, I'm very happy that we found this variation. <laughs> and uh, indeed, Rook F E one is Christoph's uh, suggestion. Uh, so uh, we. Uh, no, a queen d7 is not played. Uh, I think uh, we have rook e6. Yeah, Levon has to find any, like, find a move yeah, to, to play. That's not really. I think the move is resign, no? <laughs> I'm half joking, but you know, it's not really possible. Uh, so, what happens after queen uh, e6? I just want to make sure that uh, we did not miss something simple. So, queen takes e8. Uh, king h7. Uh, guys, it's still not over because black has this queen one check. So we need to calculate uh, properly here. And it's a very important thing. Uh, queen h5 and uh, bishop h6. There is nothing else as after queen h6. Of course, queen f5 wins. Queen h6 both are winning. So bishop h6 and uh, e8. Ah, that's that's it. Yeah, e8 and uh, queen e1 is not possible. So I don't see a move for black. Chat, are we missing anything obvious or it's just winning for? Okay, we have Wesley, so he seems very confident, and uh, I think he knows he is winning here. I mean, he has taken a bit of time to make sure and mm -hmm. calculate it. I mean, one thing that is really important. Um, even a couple of moves um, um, before with white, you have to be aware of that back rank thing, right? Yeah. There's always a little bit of danger there. And he certainly made sure that like when you promote to E8, that the uh, new queen is covering E1, things like that. You don't want to miss this. 
at the end of it. Now, we have done all the complicated moves and then um, yeah, stumble to some city back rank made, right? That That's a yeah. thing. Um, so I think we are uh, going to, uh, I, I think we, okay, actually one, imp okay, queen d7, we, we are doing very well. We are in great shape. <laughs> Rook d7. Yeah. Well, we oh, actually maybe even Rook a8, uh, does Rook a8? A win i mean guys rook d7 looks much simpler but uh, when you have time try to you know look for uh you know something yeah yeah so rook a8 maybe knight c7 yeah knight c7 kind of holds all these things yeah but i mean he's continuing he makes moves right yeah so rook d7 uh, has been played or no we don't have rook yeah, d7 yeah, yeah? Rook a8, right. Uh, and knight c7 is the only move. I think rook d8 is the move here. And uh, after a move like queen e6, rook takes e8, knight takes e8, queen takes e8, and king h7, queen h5, and queen. Oof. What a game. No. Just what a game. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> we all like to play such games, but... We don't get to do it so often, yeah? Yeah, excellent game, actually, yes. And after knight e6, what do we have? Rook x, oh, knight, knight, knight e6. It's, is it, is it over? Rook x e8. Knight f8, okay, but it's, it, this is, uh, this is just winning. Yeah, rook f8, bishop f8, and uh, queen, yeah. That's a nice one. Once again, the the importance of you know keeping an eye on uh, D one. Uh, so we, uh, I don't know what Wesley is thinking, but no, actually it's Levon who is thinking. Um, this is crazy. This is crazy game. We we had a, uh, a an excellent uh, start of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what do you think? You you have played at least one of these events, right? I know you played at least one, maybe more. Um, is it, isn't it very stressful to have all those rapid games in quick succession? I would think it's pretty, it's pretty tough. And the, the early game is probably the one where you are the most creative, right? At the end of the day, if you're on the fourth game or fifth game, it's probably difficult, right? Yes, I played. Uh, I played in uh, November uh, event, and uh, as you said, uh, in fact, the fourth is perhaps okay. You are just holding, holding on, but the fifth game is extremely tough, and uh, also it depends on uh, the way it went. You know, like uh, the first three games. Usually, if you are doing, uh, if you are doing well okay the motivation uh, keeps you going like uh, you are still happy you are you know you are in a great shape great mood and all goes well but when you miss something simple so simple that yeah uh, levon has resigned uh, it, i i think it's a great game uh, by wesley oh, i mean uh, levon played riskily but uh, you you have to punish and uh, you have to show that uh, why he played riskily so uh, it also depends slightly on the on the on how the day went for uh, the player, but uh, the, it is uh, quite challenging. I I have to uh, agree on that. Yeah, it is very challenging. I heard chat, in chat we had the information that um, that um, uh, Nepo won the game. That was the B three A five thing. Okay, so we can have uh, Nepo's uh, Nepo's uh, game if you want to just see quickly, because I I I, I try to understand and I try to uh, you know make sense of uh, <laughs> both the players' moves, but I couldn't. So that's the reason why I didn't uh, return to this game. Uh, maybe it was. Uh, that's something very exciting to check right so yeah so bishop f6 okay so this is uh what did we miss here i mean it happened so fast okay crazy position. this is crazy position yeah uh i think uh uh maxim probably played uh, just bad because uh of course, this bishop f6 move, which we saw, is an important uh, important motif. But 
yeah i don't know i i, I don't know where uh, where maxim could improve probably the first move sure um i mean the knights look odd yeah somehow we didn't get harmony yeah? into into yeah. position right it looks a little bit odd yeah these are completely odd and as we saw in levon's game once again uh when the bishop you know i just want to show that when the when your pieces are away from the king and it's a lonely king and uh, white has nicely you know all the pieces attacking king and also of course the most important uh, plan here is rook e8 um and i i will just quickly go through the moves because uh, this this is just a yeah. very bad position sorry did, did, did you show the line already after bishop f6 how that was winning Oh yes, uh, yeah, I forgot that. Nice. Uh, so queen f6 uh, would would be very nice, but uh, rook e8, uh, rook takes e8, queen takes e8, and uh, black's only move is to play queen f8 and uh, queen takes f8. So I will not uh, move uh, checkmate, although I really like to make checkmates on the board. <laughs> Yeah, G takes is a, is a cool line, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. G takes, uh, G takes uh, F six. Uh, actually, uh, I have to figure why this is winning. So let. Rookie eight, I think. Ah, sure, excellent, excellent. So yeah. rookie eight, queen takes e eight, queen F six, king G eight is the only move. Uh, bishop c4, uh, d five, bishop takes d five. Guys, this is amazing, amazing move. Really nice, yeah. yeah? really nice really nice queen f7 uh, is uh, i mean it doesn't matter black is uh, getting checkmated pretty soon made in two actually um so this is a nice trick by nepo very uh, nice perhaps it should uh, it should get into one of the courses if if there is a course on chessable uh, yeah i think um, there's something didn't simon do something about okay I'm not totally sure I'm a little bit out of the loop. I'm, I'm currently writing a new course, right? And I know, I know. I and, know. And uh, like you know, it's like three weeks until release, and I have this. I'm not sure how how you work, but for me, it's like oh, I have like five weeks. Mm, yeah, I don't need to do that much, and then like I have four weeks. It's oh, now it gets difficult. It's same, same, same. <laughs> and then oh my god, it's getting tough. And same now, here. I'm working non-stop here yeah, basically and this is like a break from from analyzing here the, the show which is uh, super nice to, to be on yeah um, but um, yeah so yesterday I was in complete I was uh, nothing nothing was happening except analyzing and writing yeah <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't see anything yeah yeah, yeah it's uh, it's same here I think uh, almost every chess player uh, it's uh, it's pretty similar stories um, I, I will just see what are the results. So uh, Anish won against uh, David Anton, and uh, we still have some games going on. Um, which one do you want to check? Uh, yeah, I'm always interested what Magnus is doing. Is, is he absolutely, absolutely. Let's let's check. It's equal material, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's equal. Uh, although yesterday it was pretty equalish uh, end game against um, Anton David, uh, this rook end game, but uh, he kept on playing and slowly improved and he finally won the game. That was, uh, not, that was vintage Magnus. Uh, this is yeah. In this end game structure, I'm not sure um, um, if you you ever did that, but. I, I looked at every single game that he ever played, really, every single one, even including Rapid Chess, because I worked on that course last year, the Magnus Touch. Yeah. And just because I wanted to find examples uh, and also examples that were not totally covered to death, like the, the games that everybody knows. I was looking at every single game. And there was mm -hmm. a, this structure, this, this structure coming from the Berlin or from the Italian with every, that's something that he played a million times. So he had a game yeah. against Vision, for example, where he won a similar structure. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when I saw the end game, I was thinking, okay, that's a typical kind of thing that he often wins. And at the end, it happens, right? Actually, he wins from both sides. That is the, that is the fun part because uh, it's not like he prefers one side. And I, I saw uh, he won games from the black side of this uh, structure as well as uh, white side. So, yeah, it is, uh, it is incredible, definitely. Um, and I think it should end in a draw zone uh, here. I don't know exactly how. 
but anybody losing yes uh, yes yes i think so is it a little bit easier for white to play this maybe because you're mad and no no i think uh i i think he's gonna get the uh king if 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 uh he's going to get the king here oh but wait a minute i i might have it's one two three four one two three ah yeah yeah i i think it's uh we are on we, wait is black in time yeah i think so yeah it's uh, it's just in time just although there is maybe nothing wrong with this uh you know but okay it's not necessary uh so this should be a, a draw i think uh so Sergey won. Sergey had uh, a tough day yesterday, but uh, he won his first game. Again, I mean, sixth round against Jordan Van Forest. And um, so, what do we have? Ali Reza won against uh, uh, Shahriyar Mamedyarov. So that's a big, uh, big victory. And uh, what do you? <laughs> uh say about this i i i, I uh, is shahriar helping somebody in the candidates because he's he also was playing something like modern and uh, uh because you know i often look at the players uh, just before some important uh not just important but like uh, candidates or world championship match and then you have like four or five players helping you and you can't play any of the prepared variations so you tend to play something simple and uh, you know if if you if you manage to make out make something out of it then you go for it i'm not sure if he's maybe working together with with somebody certainly possible i i i, I don't recall him playing c3 ever really yeah the kind of opening that i think many players have as a like a backup Some yes yes play to get the game going and uh, avoid any concrete preparation i actually felt uh, i was just having like glances of this game i felt that the position out of the opening wasn't bad for white at all i'm a little bit surprised that he's lost but like, oh yes you are right actually it should be yeah i think uh, uh white should be doing uh, perfectly fine here um we can just uh but it isn't like stuck in the middle a little bit and i don't know but uh, uh ideally i would like to have knight c2 but it doesn't work because of uh, bishop d5 i mean uh, i mean of course it's not lost but uh the threat of uh, taking uh, bishop b4 doesn't exist anymore um so let's go a few moves on how he lost so quick this this all seems uh, totally fine uh, why not to play queen d3 queen d3 uh, seems to me pretty okay there must be some queen c6 i guess uh, just knight d4, queen b7. Why? White is certainly better, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. White, uh, white is not risking. Okay, rook d1 cannot be a, a bad move. Queen c6, bishop b4, queen b7. Ah, and then he's rook d7. But actually, he could have played rook to d4 and ah, no. What am I missing here? Rook b6? Yeah, I think somehow the bishop on b4 kind of uh, got stuck here. Uh, yeah, it, anyway, I don't know. So, king d7. Oh my god. Did he just thought that this is uh, certainly playable? I, I, I don't see, like, why would you do this? It felt like White could have been better without having to sacrifice anything, but mm -hmm. maybe he um, overlooked like a small detail and is now kind of yeah making things up <laughs> as it goes <laughs> along. But it's yeah, definitely. If Knight B three has to be played, well, it's pretty dangerous. I have got an information from from chat that indeed. White was much better, but it depended on some 
some specific move that had to be found. And that's that's often the thing. Yeah? People, even super strong players, they, they, they make decisions that look odd at first. Yeah. But they, they have just overlooked a very, very small detail. Yeah. yeah. And um, then you think, why isn't he, what's he doing? That? And then, <laughs> then the explanation is not that they were totally blind. It's just that yeah. they overlooked a <laughs> small little thing, right? Actually, sometimes uh, we overlook uh, uh, very simple moves, uh, I must say. Uh, like in calculation, it's uh, uh, like, of course, you, if you exclude all those computer variations and so on, uh, we tend to forget uh, some simple moves like H3, A3, where at the end of the variation, you all, all you need to find is just that one move. And then you, I mean, the whole evaluation in your head changes. And this, this I thought is very, very important uh, thing. And just like here, of course, Knight C2 changes uh, the entire situation here. Yeah, computer evaluation um, is often also very tricky to um to to understand let's say because there are some positions that if you just ask the engine it gives you a pretty high evaluation mm -hmm. and you immediately understand why this is the case right sometimes yeah. sometimes however it gives you a high evaluation but it depends on a very very concrete sequence of moves and some trick that is impossible to see almost yeah that's uh, that's uh, an excellent point uh, by uh, made by you i think uh, it's really important uh, that uh, audience understand that uh, engine uh, moves indeed has some very very strange difficult idea at the end of like move 20 or move 25 which it's impossible for human to uh, identify i think uh, so it's a very important uh, I, I had this actually, or currently have this a lot. Um, I'm I'm working on a new course on the on the the Pirz defense E46, and you know this is um a bit this is a controversial opening yeah, because you give wide lots of space. I think you you already said yesterday that uh, you're not a fan of the modern defense. Which no, is, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, carry on, carry on. <laughs> it was a tweet or something like that. Um, and I, I do understand uh, the general um, observation because you give wide the center and so on. But if you analyze like the Pirtz defense, for example, you often get to positions where the computer gives wide like plus one, and then you, then you then you start to look deeper and deeper. And at the end of the day, black is okay. It's just yeah. super difficult. It's just like a mess. Yeah, and you don't really understand what's going on. And very often those positions might be better for white, but they're very difficult to figure out. It's not like, um, let's say, you're in an end game where you're suffering or something like that, and you immediately see, oh, this is the rotten end game. And often you just have a mess on the board. And the computer evaluation. No, absolutely. Absolutely. You are right. Uh, I mean, I, I already can recall the position which a computer gives uh, 0 0.80, which is like plus by minus uh, in chess terms, and uh, white is much better, but it's not clear at all. Uh, but I, do, I will not go through that variation and, uh, you know, just uh, um, go through that. But uh, the thing is, Actually, I when I won the World Under-10 Championship in 1996, my main opening or the only opening was uh, Perk and, uh, Pitch and uh, Modern Defense. So, I, I I mean, I tend to make fun of some of the openings, but uh, really French Defense, even though I had, I made the course from white side, I really like to play uh, from both colors, in fact. Yeah. So, uh, Modern is also some uh, one of those openings uh, in similar way, yeah. It's fun. I mean, this 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 project on on the pills. Um, it has a, a fun background. Actually, I have never played, almost never played the opening myself in yeah. tournament chess. I was just having a talk with the guys at Chessable, and and I was asking, uh, you want a lifetime repertoire? What 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 kind of uh, subjects are are open? Right? What, what yes. Write about. And yeah. you know what I suggested at the time. I wanted to to do the Sicilian Timonov, but that was ah oh I'm so I'm so glad <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> you know we have a pretty good author on that you know okay uh, yeah okay so what else uh, and then they suggested the Pirtz defense okay it was kind of funny because I have a I have a little relation to that the Pirtz was uh, I think the second one of the first grandmasters of uh, former Yugoslavia that country doesn't exist anymore but back yeah. then it was one country. 
and nowadays it's Slovenia. He was from Slovenia and uh, I'm always traveling to Slovenia every year for my holiday. So I was kind of, I felt a little bit related yeah, to that. I thought, why not look at it? And I, I did some checks if, um, how bad is this opening? Is it in bad shape? It doesn't have- a No, problem. no, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not actually uh, in bad shape or such thing. Actually, it's quite, uh, uh, quite uh, nice try when you want to, you know, keep uh, chances from black side. I mean, uh, it gives way more chances uh, than Berlin, for example, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I looked at this and I really feel it's, it's a little bit under appreciate it uh, yeah. in particular if you just um, want to have a fight on the board there is no sure. let's say natural way for white to be boring it doesn't exist there's not no. an exchange variation or so, something like that so so that is uh, that was actually my point uh, my uh, point uh, uh, like uh, my tweet was you can play anything uh, but the point is, I didn't say that uh, everything uh, leads to a, an advantage for white. So <laughs> that wasn't mentioned. But uh, anyway, we have standing guys on the screen. As we can see, Anish Kiri is uh, leading uh, by a point. Uh, so excellent uh, performance so far by Anish. Uh, he won uh, yesterday two games and uh, today, you know, three games in a row. And uh, before uh, uh, Christoph uh, will uh, join Ginger GM channel pretty soon, I, 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 and before we let you go, you have some uh, predictions for the next round or uh, um, which Who's playing. Which... Let's let's have a look there. I'm... Uh, sure, I can. Uh, I can. Uh, 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 Levon Aronian Anish Giri. This is a very important battle, in my opinion, of course. Uh, uh, especially Anish is leading. However, Levon has an excellent score against uh, uh, Anish. And uh, the last time we we saw uh, Nidov and uh, we saw this uh, Bishop C4 idea by Levon and he won the game convincingly. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I hope to see uh, Nidov, uh, which Anish made the yeah. course. It's, 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 it's more difficult nowadays to predict what Levon is playing, right? He's much absolutely, more absolutely. versatile nowadays, um, formerly D4 only almost, and now he's playing all kinds of things. So this is going to be a tense one. And um, who is Magnus playing? I'm, I'm always interested in that. Uh, Shahriar. I think uh, Magnus uh, has excellent score against Shahriar. So yeah, I think uh, Magnus should win win that. Um, so yeah, thank you very much uh, for joining us and uh, explaining your thoughts. Are you covering the the next rounds as well? Are you? Yes, uh, of course. If you if you are interested, I mean, if you are free and interested, we would love to have you back. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's it's great to have you uh, on our show. Oh, maybe let's see if I if I can do it. Right? I mean, I'm, sure. I'm currently like in writing camp. Yeah, as I yeah. as I call it. Of course, yeah. I'm not sure how, how you did it. If you if you um, were in the writing process, you're doing this just just at home, right? In your regular yeah yeah. Mind. I sometimes um, actually just leave home and and go somewhere else to just. Oh, I do remember you uh, going to some place uh, uh, before you finished the one D four uh, reporter, right? I did that. And that, and that works well, but nowadays you cannot travel. So yeah, yeah, that's too bad. Off the table, right? So, so yeah thank you very much uh, uh, say uh, thank you very much from chat and uh, myself and uh, yeah sure we'll we'll just take a short break and uh, mihailo oleksenko will join uh, join the stream guys we'll just take a short break thank you thank you bye 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 Hello everyone, welcome back. And uh, now I am joined by a special uh, guest, uh, Mihailo Oleks Oleksienko. Uh, he completed a PhD in mathematics. So for me, this is very, very, very interesting. I mean, a chess player completing studies is already good, but uh, completing uh, PhD is uh, uh, extremely inspiring, I must say. And uh, I have played against him three times, and uh, so I know the you know the the way he approaches chess, and uh, he's into teaching uh, uh, 
premier coach at coaches and also made uh, chessable courses so without me talking uh, more of it let's welcome mihailo alexenko uh, excuse me for my pronunciation of your name because uh, in uh, many uh, chess base uh, uh, database uh-huh. it's always in different uh, names so i i'm always mistaken so welcome welcome to our channel and uh, let us uh, you know tell us what do you think and which uh, game should we check oh thank you hari thank you so much uh, yeah i i have very hard to pronounce last name and yes it's been changing uh, in in the database in megabase even in fide and the reason is like very silly i would say because the the first time they uploaded my name to fide it was different from my passport and when i had uh-huh. to acquire a visa uh-huh. uh, all the time so i get an invitation and it says this last name and they say <laughs> this isn't you in the embassy and I'm, because there's like one letter missing or absolutely like, yeah. every time i had trouble with that so then i wrote to fide and uh, I'm, I'm guessing it automatically changes in okay in megabase in the weekend chat so just a few letters were missing sure, um, sure. so yeah that's uh yeah that's the story of my name <laughs> Great. And uh, uh, I mean, I want to know more about you and, uh, you know, more questions I have. But the position right now, mm-hmm. uh, which we have on the board, uh, Hikaru oh. Nakamura versus uh, Alan P- Picho, uh-huh. I think uh, this is exactly what I have in my course. <laughs> so I, oh, when, wow. I, I like I, 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 I myself do not remember my course because I haven't studied uh, it for a while and uh, I have no I don't feel ashamed to admit that of course you have to study in order to remember no matter how many hours you work on it like a couple of months i am sure yes. uh, as a coach you uh, you must have you know c- come across such a thing yes of course and especially if you if you do a big course and it's so hard to to memorize even if you already have a file it's right there in front of you it's so yeah. hard to memorize uh, luckily with chessable it's so much easier with the move trainer technology and everything else uh, uh, it just takes practice i suppose and dedication yeah. um so uh, going on here uh well i actually know that black is fine but i do not know how (laughs) so this is a typical chess player syndrome i must say because uh, you know that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, behind uh, you know you see all these notes at your uh, home and you you know that this is fine (laughs) but you cannot figure it out when you reach this position so anyway i think uh, they the uh, the players will be spending uh, some time here perhaps because uh, they they played like 18 moves very quick and uh, if you have uh, some game uh, you know some preference uh, we can uh, jump to some other game actually yeah i have no opinion on this position it's uh, I okay sit here just it's for very good minutes figuring out what is going on no 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 let's not do this let's not do this <laughs> I, I i like to see this game because anish kiri okay. right now is uh, leading the tournament um and uh, uh for me also psychology is very important in chess uh i think um, yesterday uh we had peter swidler and i asked uh uh, the question, uh, I mean, uh, that uh, how do you approach when you have a difficult uh, score against certain opponent? Uh, in this case, uh, I think Anish has slightly uh, or, uh, you know, uncomfortable score against Levon. And uh, uh, of course, they had many draws, but uh, I don't know the statistics, but I do think that uh, Levon feels very comfortable uh, playing against Anish. And uh, for example, I think you do play this variation, right? Uh, this queen d uh, Russian system in Grunfeld. Can, can you show that from the beginning? The absolutely, game? absolutely, the absolutely. Yeah. Oh, no, I do not play Grunfeld with black and I don't go for main lines with white as well. Right, right, right. Okay. Just, uh, uh, you probably know this. We played three times. I stay away from the main lines. Yes, so yes, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, I I would always prepare for the main lines. I never got them. So yeah, I I do understand. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. this is all kind of uh, theory. So queen e6 mm-hmm. is not very good because uh, then black would just get a lot of mm-hmm. counter chances uh, all yeah. over the place. Uh, so bishop to e3, knight do, knight d e5. 
I think mm-hmm. this is this this might easily be, uh, be like some kind of theory. Uh, important mm-hmm. point to note that Levon did not spend any yeah. time here. So Bishop Anish is in trouble here. Yeah, I I think so. I think so. I don't know what is uh, what is the main stuff, but uh, he's just blitzing. Is it because wow. of his loss? Uh, ah, it or... could be. So he's just nervous and just wants to get it. Over yeah, it, it's very very difficult to estimate if it is because of his loss or is it because uh, he just feels very comfortable to play against Tanish. I am I I am not sure actually. I'm not sure. It it could be both. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. It could be both. Uh, wow, that's a very interesting position. White has the center. The king on g3 is weird. The knight is not hanging, of course, as yes. you're drawing the arrows. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess uh, something like rook f7, uh, rook f8. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, knowing Levon, he can have some preparation with some nasty tree, uh, you know, some kind of. Uh, yeah uh, some kind of king h2 kind of thing um and tell me uh, which part of the game do you like more middle game end game or opening i i, I already middle game middle game i i was under the impression end game somehow uh, i i it felt depends what kind of end game ah, so you like the end game where you are uh, under control so that's uh, that's <laughs> one uh, good <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a fan of openings. Uh, okay. I do like middle game. I think most of the games are decided in the middle game. Yeah, it's very rare that uh, you can go to an uh, equal playable end game. Uh, very often, it's like if you enter the end game phase, uh, somebody is much better or winning, or mm-hmm. it's a very drawish position, so very little play is left. So I think uh, if one wants to improve. Uh, in certain area, area, then middle game would be a good a good place to to go. Yeah. Yeah, middle game also is a very uh, um, tough uh, area on, uh, you know, like you have many courses and many books, but uh, exactly what kind of middle game you can uh, show on, uh, on uh, you know, how to approach, like, let's say, I give you a position, but then you uh-huh. might not get the same one, you might just get the theme. So that's kind of hard to balance because... Uh, uh, end game is specific, like you have some rook and pawn end games, it's point A to B to C and so on. So you know mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. It, this is uh, how it goes. Opening to in some to, to some extent, it's same like that. But middle game is very interesting. And uh, mm. yeah, are there any books or uh, uh, courses? Oh, that's, uh, that's the, thank you for that question. Yes, there is a course. <laughs> ah, there is a course, okay. <laughs> um, uh, I, I actually I have so far only one course for Chessable, uh, but I'm working on the second one. Mm-hmm. And um, my first course was uh, immediately accepted as uh, without any uh, like uh, questions asked. They say yes, you can do it mm-hmm. uh, because I noticed that on Chessable you have openings, you have end game. You have mm-hmm. tactics and you have strategy. I think there are four categories, right? Yes, yes. But there's yes. one important part of the game that is that there's a- actually not a lot of even books uh, and video series uh, uh, at all on initiative and dynamic play. Yeah. Um, because a strategy is for, let's say, some slow positions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, like the Nepomneshi game, there's a Benoni pawn structure and so on. Uh, the position is relatively slow. Yeah, uh, what I mean by that is, uh, uh, oh no, I didn't see that. So there are some very tense position like this one. Pieces hanging, pawn on C5, pawn yeah. on F4, knight on E5, knight. This is very tense position, it requires calculation. And there are certain positions like say, Queen's Gambit declined, you know, yeah. where they're purely strategical. You have to figure out which piece to improve, which piece to exchange, what are the maneuvers and so on and mm-hmm. so on. But dynamic play and grabbing the initiative is very tense um, uh, part of the game where you have to be very specific. Very often, you know, in, in strategical chess, it is in close positions or slow, what I call slow positions. It's very rare that you have like one clearly best move. You can do mm-hmm. this, you can do that. As long as you're going in the good direction, you're fine. 
but yeah. uh, in such dynamic positions like this one for example one bad move and you you have in huge trouble or you lose right yes so the exactly price, the price of a mistake is very high yeah but there's no tactics there's no immediate win right yeah. there's nothing to calculate yet so how do you go about it so that's my course is all about how Excellent. do you think in such positions yeah so uh I mean, I, I, I understood the, I mean, I understand the, uh, like I totally understood what you meant. I, I just want mm -hmm. to tell the chat that, uh, uh, the importance of candidate moves and prioritizing, uh, which candidate move, uh, to calculate and to what extent is a very important part of middle game. Uh, mm -hmm. the reason being, uh, with the candidate moves are not kind of forcing in nature i mean it could be in uh, forcing in nature but it could be just uh, uh, a move whereas in end game or uh, tactics it's point a to b as i mentioned earlier so that is actually a very difficult uh, course to prepare uh, as you not only have uh, you know give uh, the candidate moves you also need to explain the thought process. So, so explaining uh, the thought process is one of uh, the most difficult uh, things in chess. Uh, so, uh, like uh, uh, when you see Leela chess or Stockfish or all the artificial intelligent uh, based, uh, you know, neural network engines, uh, you see the evaluation uh, like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and uh, so on. But you don't understand. Uh, that one move uh, somewhere, uh, you know, after 15 moves, which small move. Uh, so that kind of explaining thought process is very important in chess. And I think it can improve uh, chess playing strength to any player. And uh, that's a very good course. And I think all of you, sh I, I mean, I'm eagerly uh, looking forward for that course to see how uh, you are, uh, you know, making the course, you know, I am, I'm uh, really uh, eager to understand how uh, someone can explain the thought process. It's not at all a uh, easy thing to do. And uh, definitely, uh, guys, I, uh, I mean, let's see, I don't know when you are releasing when it is going to be released, but uh, definitely we should. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we misunderstood one another. I already did the course about initiative and dynamic play and it's been published in October. Okay, so, it's so now. Oh, it's I'm working great. on tactics. I'm working on another course now. Okay, another so uh, the course is already yeah. the course is already yes, there, yes, guys. Yes, you yes. should you should get it, and it's on sale on Chessable. Uh, go to Chessable.com, and uh, you have uh, 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 Michael's uh, course, and uh, definitely buy it, and uh, it should be uh, it it will uh, help you in improving your chess. Um, so not much happened uh, here in the game from where we left it uh, this is where we left and uh, I think rook d6 um, you know sometimes it makes me wonder when you play make moves like rook d6 knight g6 rook e6 uh, bishop f4 bishop f4 knight f4 okay. how do you understand if this is part of his preparation or he's just playing uh well he did spend four minutes out of 15 yes it's like 25 percent of his time so clearly okay. he's out of his preparation okay and um uh, uh, there could be like you could be very devilish about it if there's a line that you want your opponent to fall into yes and you pretend that you're yes. done with the preparation it's not that case yeah yeah, end, yeah yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, uh by the way um <clears throat> Okay, we have b6. Um, I mean, I, I think uh, white is still doing uh, well here. I, I, I don't know if he is much better or something. Just I like white's position because he can nicely get the bishop. There is not like uh, black does have a nice pawns, but they, they are not really moving. And this rook I like a lot because knight h5 check or knight f6 kind of things are not possible. Uh, and rook a8 would be nice to have, but uh, you know I can take rook e8, and uh, you know king f4 can be uh, yeah. possible. So yes, I like white's position, but uh, yeah, we 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 have to wait and see. Uh, and Anish is thinking, uh, uh, spending a lot of time here. So 
I don't like uh, I don't like that. Uh, I think uh, yeah. when he reaches to end game, he should have time uh, sufficient time. Uh, or else, you know, in end game, you uh, really need to be precise. You cannot just <laughs> uh, make whatever you like and expect to survive. And actually, I don't know if you agree with me, but uh, many people uh, feel or have a myth that. If you are positionally sound, you can play end games uh, pretty easy. But to me, like when I see players uh, like Alexei Shirov, uh, uh, you know the Bishop H3 move or many other end games. I mean, he's remembered with by the Bishop H3, but he has so many nice technical end games. Uh, and uh, he's he you you can say that he's not he's excellent at positional play, but uh, he's most uh, He's, he's mainly a sharp and uh, tactical player. So that way uh, I feel that uh, tactics and the precise calculation is very important part of end game. And uh, it's not like you feel the end game and you are going to win this game. Uh, that's how I feel about it. Uh, I don't know if uh, you agree with yeah, that. I, uh, I would say it really depends on the end game. For example, the yes. end game in front of us is so dynamic yeah. So no, uh, no uh, knowledge that you have before. Don't, don't nobody cares. You yes. calculate. There's check bishop c4, rook f1. E pawn will be pushed. You just calculate. There's no yeah. no Voretsky and game manual will help yes. you. Yes. Right. You just calculate to the best of your ability. It's very dynamic. Very like white's play is so easy. Give a check. Go rook f1. Attack the knight. Push the e pawn. Black has no pass pawn uh, available anytime soon. White's kink is closer to the center. Mm -hmm. White is so much better, I, at least from human point of view, I would say. Yeah. Uh, rook f5 or rook e6, just keep yeah. attacking with every move. Yeah, keep attacking, push the pawn. White has enormous initiative here. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, this is what I want to tell the viewers because uh, all, in all, most of the books, it is uh, somehow the the the, uh, the image of a good end game player is uh, this way that if you are good at your uh, understanding the position you can automatically become a great uh, end game player mm -hmm. um, so that's what i wanted to explain and i see anish uh, anish camera if you have uh, uh, uh -huh. you can see anish uh, i think he's uh, i don't think he's very comfortable from his camera I, i'm not sure Mm -hmm. Yeah, Levon is spending too much time on uh, just give a check, attack something. Uh, I, I also have this uh, theory since I'm a mathematician as well, former mathematician. Please, please. I like, I like mathematics, I like statistics. Yes. So, uh, for example, there are certain... Oh, I didn't like uh, uh, what happened. Uh, something just happened. H4 happened. I don't like this move H4. And I'll let, how much time did... Uh, uh, Levon spent uh, I cannot see. I cannot years. see uh, exactly how much time uh, he oh, spent. I just, uh, I just checked the transmission on chess twenty four. He spent uh, four minutes on the move. Mm -hmm. So uh, here's some mathematics that uh, I like to 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 show my students. Sure, it's, sure. So he had twelve minutes and he spent four minutes on the move. With so this, it's thirty uh, percent. Yeah, you would play three moves. Yeah, that's it. You would yeah. run out of time in three moves. Yes, Sometimes yes. it is justified. Sometimes yeah. it is justified when you're about to win the game. That's yeah. a good point to stop yeah. and calculate everything carefully. Or if you're about to lose the game, then you should calculate. But otherwise, just uh, I, I, I'm a fan of forcing moves. I don't know what is the best move in this position, but my moves would be rook f1 or rook f5. These would be the moves that I, or okay, rook f5. Rook no, no, rook f5 doesn't work, but I understand if let's say rook is not on h1, you, of course you can, you would go yeah. here. But uh, yeah, definitely h4 is some, somehow it, it is getting an automatic move, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I like uh, rook f1 just because uh, since the king is more closer and uh, white has nice diagonal, once he gets the pawn to e5 and gets his king, he is just yeah. much better. So even if he exchanges the rooks, so but we have uh, h4, knight g6, rook g5, and rook a8. Of course, uh... you know uh, this is the thing I'm discussing in my course. 
uh, very often, if you play a move like h4, which could very well be the best move in the position, by the way, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the problem with such moves is that now you give variety of options to your opponent yeah. and you don't know what's going to happen next. But where, when you attack yourself, you're leading the game to where you want to. And yes. it's so much easier to stay on top. In my course, half of the course is end games. Mm -hmm. Like half of the mm -hmm. games are end games, how to keep, maintain, grab initiative in the end game. And mm -hmm. half of the half of that quarter of the course mm -hmm. is about sacrificing material in the end game just for initiative. Just Not for initiative. Even, okay. Just for the initiative. There you go. With, with plenty of pieces, of course. You cannot do that with like one or two or three pieces. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so that's uh, I, not a fan of it for me. I do not like uh, what is going on here because somehow this rook went to g5, uh, rook went to d1, h4. These moves are not really uh, kind of a plan. It's more like I play this move, I play that move and uh, see what happens because I think uh, knight e5, uh, perhaps we will see knight e5. And uh, bishop, it is a very important decision where he's going to place this bishop because you have to understand that rook f3, um, mm. I mean, it's not checkmate, but uh, you know, rook f3 could be annoying then just to go rook f4, attack this h4 pawn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And on the other hand, if you bring the bishop to e2, then you can, you can have some other issues like h6, where this rook is going from g5. Only to have five. Yeah, of course, only yeah, to but, have five. Mm -hmm. But uh, then, uh, then this bishop uh, gets, you know, play yeah. knight is nicely placed on e5. All then black needs is just to get the king yeah. uh, to f6, yeah. and he'll be it, doing well. It seems to me that now Anish is attacking. Where, I think so. Uh, I think so. Before yeah. it felt like Levon could have been on top. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, guys, uh, if we are missing something uh, really silly, please uh, do let us know in chat. Uh, we <laughs> don't have the engine or evil bar running here. So, um, and of course, I am enjoying uh, commenting that way. And uh, I don't. Yeah, it's so much more natural. And yeah, uh... but certainly we will make mistakes. And uh, the point of uh, you know, you have to understand that players are also not having evil uh, evaluation bars or <laughs> engine. So we are trying to be as closer as uh, the players uh, are thinking. So of course, um, they uh, they have a lot at stake. So they are, of course, much more focused and so on. But uh, yeah, we have 95 on the board and uh, bishop to e2. Mm -hmm. No, uh, sorry, that's my analysis. No, we don't that's have 95. Analysis, yeah, no. that's my analysis. Um, I don't know why is he thinking. Do, does he have any other move here? Well, there's a capture, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm a little afraid to capture on e4. What's going to um, happen? So h5, rook f3. Oh, this, this is crazy. Okay, this is not the way. I think... Uh, but why he didn't capture? I mean, I, I, I always think uh, that you should... Whether you play or not, you should always consider uh, the move when you are capturing because, of course, yeah. it's 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 material. You should not let it go. What exactly is wrong with uh, bishop e4 here? H5, I don't know. Rook f3. I don't know. What King could he not like? Ah, perhaps this. Yeah. Perhaps this. Just this. Because after rook f2, I just have king g1. Mm -hmm. And uh, if... If I, I will just show this uh, yeah. idea, knight e4, rook e4, and uh, rook g8. This is obviously yeah, the so idea. That, that must have been the problem. Yes. Uh, so, but hold on a second. The king is so exposed. And yeah. Maybe not give a check. Maybe just move the knight. Uh, uh, so knight e5. For example, yeah. Or knight f4. I didn't see bishop b5. I'm just playing with fire here. I can understand, but uh, I'm still uh, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still very curious to see how this is lost, or I mean, not lost, but you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, this this white, black is never going to lose uh, because uh, it's after uh, okay, yeah, 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 or linear mate could happen. Yeah, it, it's probably even mate. So this is surprising uh, to me. This is really surprising uh, to me, actually. 
Yeah, so I feel like Levon gave gave up the initiative with, uh, yeah, with this absolutely. H4, Rook G5. These were not forcing moves. They didn't create any threats. And it gave Anish um, lots of flexibility. <laughs> Baxter Stockman says Anish had to make sure it's safe. <laughs> well, it is really safe even to take Bishop uh, E4. What? I don't know if I'm missing something here. Uh, but to me... It should have been at least considered. So anyway, we have knight e5, bishop e2, and rook e6. Well, per perhaps uh, it's true because h6 might some someday, not immediately, but run into rook d6. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. here, uh, h6 is quite a serious threat, no? Uh, after something like rook moves to f5, I don't like yeah. this. I don't like this whole thing. I like Black's position now. Yeah. Uh, or Black has all good pieces now. Yeah. It, it wasn't like that just a few moves ago, right? Yeah. The bishop on c4 was so much better, nicely controlling the diagonal, and yeah. then now it yeah. has to defend on e2. Uh, something seriously went wrong here for Levon. It's not mm -hmm. like Lou. Uh, also, I want to point one thing. Uh, sometimes uh, the position might not. Uh, changed so much as like from uh, a better position to worse position but the fact that from a better position you are uh, your uh, advantage ha is lost or your pieces uh, went to slightly inferior position you feel that it is much worse do you think uh, it happens uh, like uh, in chess or uh, it's just uh... oh yeah <laughs> Uh, it depends on the perception. I remember many, many years ago, Levon Aronian was playing Shahriyar Mamedyarov in some mm -hmm. super tournament, classical game. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, it was a very weird game. There was, uh, uh, hold on a second, Shah had two bishops, but bad pawn structure. He had like a2, c3, e4, and fgh pawns. So mm -hmm. he has an extra e pawn. And black yeah. has the same pawn structure, like here, a7, b6, c5, and mm -hmm. fgh mm -hmm. doesn't have two bishops, but all white squares are weak in white's position. Yeah. And white has two bishops and potential for kingside attack. Terrible weak squares, white squares. So, and so they go, the game ended in a draw. So mm -hmm. they go to a commentator's room. Okay. And they both think they were better all the time, and they are both <laughs> disappointed with the draw. And they are. <laughs> we can ask. We can ask them to play once again <laughs> from the same position. <laughs> you, you know, but uh, this is still not the end of the. the, the uh, I was like, and and they are both convinced. They are arguing. I was better here because of this. Because no, I had a very good position, and so on and so on. Yeah. And then I checked that same game with the engine. Equal. Zero point zero zero the whole game. <laughs> Yeah, this often happens uh, uh, in chess. Uh, I mean, players yeah. uh, have their own... Oh, h5. Oh, my God. h5. Um, I don't like this position, uh, this move for several reasons. One, you have a bishop, uh, which is light square. So why would you put, I mean, play h4, h5, uh, h4, h5, which can be uh, a weakness uh, in any end game i mean at some point uh, for sure it will be a weakness but i think concretely uh this pawn on e4 might be in danger i mean hmm. i don't i don't think uh white can play rook f5 because uh rook g8 knight d6 yeah, black is definitely attacking. The king is exposed to e4. It would be very funny if Aronian wins and it was everything correct. That would be very funny. <laughs> no. Okay, but I don't think that... No, I don't uh, think so. Okay. Uh, because now, uh, you know, knight e4 is a serious threat. And uh, how mm. does... Uh, how do you yeah. defend this? How you do know, you... Uh... Uh, there's like a joke. Or, uh, I don't remember who's... Like Nimtsovic said, you just blockade the... Uh, isolated pawn, yeah. right? Uh, yes. Something that, but in reality, you don't have, you don't need to block it. You need to you win need it. To win That's it, the yes. ultimate goal, right? Yes, Blocking yes. it is the temporary measure, like yes. with the knight on e5. At the end of the day, you, you want to win that pawn. <laughs> so that's what, what Anish seems to be doing right now. Yeah. Knight goes to d6, putting enormous pressure on the... It, it should have been an asset, now it's a weakness. 
yeah now i don't know what, how uh which which way he will start yeah we have b5 on the board oh b5 actually. on the board mm -hmm. yeah because he's just gonna uh expand on the queen side of course the black king is very safe and with this pawn on h5 um you know sometimes this h5 pawn is really bad i i, I don't like this move at all uh, i think uh, with pawn on h3 my king is much more safe you know on g3 mm -hmm. and once you push this h5 also this kind of i mean it's not really a great threat but uh, you always have to watch out for such things and we have you cameras know, it... oh, yeah me... yeah please, please, uh, please i wanted to say about the h pawn uh, it could be Alpha Zero's um, um, influence, influence on yeah. the first world. Yeah, yeah. Always like throwing the H pawn as H4 far as you can. Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, it doesn't mean you should do it all the time. Yeah. But it definitely changed. Oh my goodness, that's a fork and the double. No, uh, he, uh, Knight C4 did not happen. I, I, I mean, I didn't want to interrupt, uh -huh. so I just made the move. But uh, I, I was thinking if he can go for this. But like, uh, I think. Uh, white is okay maybe <laughs> thanks to this move i uh... the problem is you know the pro white doesn't have really forcing moves black yes. is the one uh, choosing to attack and white is just defending i think white yeah. can hold this but definitely black uh, black anish has the initiative yeah anish played rook f8 he just wants to capture the okay. pawn i i, I uh, but that doesn't but really that's, that's a draw that's a draw uh that's uh, yeah that's just dead actually mm. so uh, we probably uh, will see something like rook g5 then just take everything and uh, a draw if i am not uh yeah e5 i okay. was thinking about e5, e5. yeah the pawn okay. you cannot capture open the bishop maybe white can uh, attack for a little bit that pawn is dead man walking but at least mm -hmm. white can attack mm -hmm. and knight f7 did it happen uh, uh, yes knight f7 bishop oh, wow. f5 we are oh, having we are uh, i don't think white is attacking white is probably cursing himself for pushing h4 h5 here uh -huh. no this is no, uh, you this know is... you know what what levon is trying to do if the pawn is on h6 if you double rooks on seventh rank there would be a checkmate <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> but uh, the, the yeah uh, uh, by the way king h2 uh, i think uh, knight e5 is uh, losing here ouch so i just want i will show the idea here okay mm -hmm. king g1 uh i okay. mean it might be even some mate here but okay let's keep it simple uh mm -hmm. and uh otherwise where is where is this king going yeah king h2 played 95 should be any i mean oh. we should be seeing 95 i mean even bishop d7 rook d7 95 is winning as well but of course, knight. Oh ah, but he played knight e5. Yeah, Anish uh, went for the safe choice. Yeah, that's that's just winning. Hmm. And we're making fun of Anish to going for safe positions. He's the sole leader of the tournament. Of tournament. He's no, he's playing. Level. He's playing uh, excellent chess. I saw. Uh, I. I mean, we were seeing his uh, both victories against uh, Magnus Carlsen and So Wesley mm -hmm. in a row. And he won against David Anton uh, in round six and round seven he won against Levon. So four wins in a row, guys. Anish is on fire. <laughs> Please don't make uh, jokes about <laughs> safety. <laughs> there is no safe mode. This is uh, game is on. Wow. Wow. He got into uh, Levon's opening prep. He survived and outplayed. Wow. Yeah. I think uh, this uh, the, uh, H H four. I mean, I might be a bit more critical, but I I do believe H four is definitely not the not a move which you should make. Even move like Rook D one would uh, would be preferable than uh, playing H four in my opinion. Yeah, number. So uh, in my course, I'm discussing uh, first consider all the good looking forcing moves. Yeah. Attack something. In this case, it's only Rook F1 that makes sense. And if not, then improve one of your pieces, which is Rook on H1, which yeah. would be Rook to D1. Rook to and D1. only then you you may go to some sophisticated moves like H4 yeah. or maybe preventing something. It's very rare that those kind of moves like H4, it could happen, yeah. but yeah. it's very rare. Oh, yes. this is mate? Uh, I would uh, uh, not sure uh, uh, because uh, black does have ah, rook, okay. uh, eight f five, but uh, uh, this is definitely not uh, how time one always played. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how it went so badly. <laughs> uh, 
Uh -huh. uh, I think, uh, okay, my first question would be why not D takes E6? This... Why not D takes E6? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. And I mean, you can also get Rook to D8. Is, am I missing something here? Uh, looks something with logical. the G6 square? I don't know, what could it be? Because uh, Bishop on B7 is doing very well. Yeah, and then you just castle safely, but maybe he thought castle and F file. Like, yeah, yeah, but uh, um, I, I mean, sometimes the, I, I don't mind even uh, making mm -hmm. a long castle, right? Because, uh, of course, in Knight of, you have so many of these yes. structures where uh, yeah. two bishop, uh, double bishops are taking care of a lot of squares. Yeah. Um, so F takes E6 is a little bit weird. And you want to have left pawn islands, don't you? You want to yes. have a yes. nice pawn islands. Pawn uh, yes, of course. <laughs> so that's why I, I like D takes E6. Anyway, so ca short castle, rook, H, rook G1. Yeah, this is something. I like we... position a lot. Yes, I like two it, bishops. It, it seems. Uh, I don't know what happened. Out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, rook c8, g3. Maybe it's it's very hard to find a target. Like, like what do you attack? You have all these pieces. What do you attack? Yeah, uh, black would like to attack uh, the c2 pawn by bringing the bishop to e4. Mm -hmm. But then the problem is the queen is on e5 and not somewhere, you know, uh, yeah, where it can support. And uh, this is exactly the reason why the pawn is better on f7 than, uh, than on d7 because you then you the can default. yeah sure. so you should you should play uh, d takes c6. I think uh, now Alan is going to blame me for uh, <laughs> you just because... need more publicity. You're gonna be fine. You know? <laughs> yes, because yesterday uh, he lost uh, against Anish uh, with white side of knight of, and uh, I think Anish made an improvement over his own course so he said like but you did not play what was in the course <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah sometimes uh, of course you need to uh, check for improvements uh, you know it's changing every single day it's no longer yeah. like you can uh, play the all the time and we have nakamura on uh, camera we will just go to the final position uh, I think okay. from his facial expressions, usually you cannot predict much. Um, but uh, he's focused and not smiling, so I would say he, he feels he's winning. What does he do when he's not winning? Sorry? What does he do when he's not really winning? Uh, when he's not winning, he's... Uh, you, you, will, you will understand when he, he's... Uh, <laughs> it's not that difficult. But actually, uh, he, he, has, uh, he has become so solid. Like, he rarely loses uh, in all the online events. I mean, before you would see all kinds of crazy ideas, crazy openings, and then, uh, you know, he... He, he won m m uh, much more games, I, I would say, but uh, re uh, recently he just plays uh, Queen's Gambit Decline, um, some Berlin from against E4 and uh, so uh -huh. on. But um, where he feels he can he can win against a certain opponent, he goes for it. Uh, that's what I I, I uh -huh. feel from his uh, his position. I mean his uh, uh, strategy, let's say. Mm. How do we get the queen to the king or the second rook? Or how do you get out from this attack? Queen c4? Uh, I was, can uh, we attack rook d7? No, what can we do? I was thinking about queen c4. Uh, firstly, queen, uh, okay, queen c6 is not a threat yet. Uh, but I mean, you be. don't you mm -hmm. don't have to do something uh, drastic. Mm -hmm. Like you can just go uh, knight c5, uh, just rook g4, and you know you can win it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, actually, yeah. we do have that. I mean, uh, let let me update it. This is the current position. So we have the same <laughs> we have the same okay. moves. Um, you need the pawn on a3, but uh, I'm afraid that's not going to happen. White's king is yeah. really safe. Um, Oh wait, wait, wait! I think I, I kind of okay. What happens to queen e five? Oh, this is the position. What was the last move? Uh, knight c five happened. Knight c five. Okay, so the pawn is just standing there, and the rook is pinned. What did he kind of plan? Ah, knight just d seven. No, knight d seven. I have queen e one. No, knight e six has been played. Knight oh, that's six. pretty. That's pretty. 
if Queen E1, of course. Um, I don't know if uh -huh. Alan missed. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So he took D takes E6, of course. Rook takes E6. Oh, this is this crazy. Is show, show. This is yeah, crazy. But 10 seconds, there's no yeah, chance. No chance. no chance. No chance. No chance. The only I think I could think of is stalemate for black, but the pawn is not, not even sacrificed. Yeah. You know, just so, try to drop all the pieces and yeah. stalemate yourself. But I don't think that's. No, rook C6, and uh, it's game over. It's game over. Yeah. Too many pawns, the king is totally safe. Yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah, I, I think rook c6 uh, should be uh, weak. Ah, because Hikaru has uh, one minute, so he's not in a rush. Yeah, against 10 seconds for queen takes c6. Okay, that's also winning. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, aha, because of yeah, rook d7 and, and rook d8. Checkmating queen yeah. early first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, we uh, I want to quickly go to one crazy, I mean, drawing uh, pattern here. Uh, so <laughs> I don't oh my know, god <laughs> I don't know if this is yeah it is a miss of course yeah, oh my god oh my god what what happened uh hold on a second can't th this is totally winning for black right uh absolutely I think uh, okay. all you need is something like rook c4 just uh, just just move this uh rook from yeah. c2 yeah and uh, yeah, Timur uh, did not see it, or I don't know what what happened here, but Didn't C takes T4. Dubov, Dubov saves the game yesterday. Yes, yes. Mamet Yarov. Like yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you never stalemate. know when stalemate yeah. is around the corner. Black is completely winning. Uh, Knight is protecting everything. All he had to do is to move this rook from C2. That's all. Uh, all you. Wow. Yeah, just and rook c4. Really escape, really? No. Uh, so let's see. C takes d4, rook okay. d7, yeah. king f6, rook f7. Okay. So this is the best he can do. Rook d5, king c7. Okay, rook c5 would be uh, a little bit unfortunate for <laughs> white. So rook d7. He's never going to give a check where uh, black rook can move from the second rank. That's all he need to uh, he need to take oh, care. No, of. this is stalemate. King a five. What yeah, if king you go a... king c five and give up the rook? Uh, king c five. I would. Okay, that's a very very important <laughs> question. I must say. I give up um... if rook c seven, king b four, rook c two. I push the pawn. Maybe I'm just winning there. It seems like promoting very quickly. Ah, but I just give this check. Okay. So King here, c4. rook b4. Okay. King uh, d3. Oh, but this King is lost. E2. This is lost. And yeah, that's it. I lost. cut the second rank. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. In fact, uh, did, uh, did Timur, miss, uh, Timur miss a win here? King c5. King c5, King c5, so rook c5 is... is the only move. Uh, which to which to might have concerned him. So we, let's uh, take a look at yeah. this move. King c3, uh, King b4, rook yeah. c4, yeah. let's say. No, rook c4 ah, rook is c4. met with. No no. no, 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 rook c4. Yes, yes. Uh, so rook c2, but this is just lost. Seems like the pawn is just. No, no, this is just lost. lost. I mean, d2, d1, there is no chance. Oh, it's a big miss. Big miss. Hmm. It's a big, big, uh, I mean, it could, wow. yeah, now this is just a draw now because, that's it. yeah, yeah. So after King A2, Rook B2, King A1, Rook B1. So black cannot, uh, escape, uh, checks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. So Rook B7, King C5 was the winning, uh, plan. Wow. Nice. That's unfortunate for, yeah. for Timor. Uh, so I will just uh, quickly update the results. So Le uh, Levon lost uh, to Anish Giri and uh, Wesley so won against Daniel Dubov. Okay, he's coming back. And uh, what do we have here? Uh, Wesley won against Levon uh, in round six. I don't know if you saw this game. I, we were analyzing this game with Christoph uh, Crazy game but oh, Wes that one. Wesley um, uh, I mean uh, Levon played very very risky stuff and also somewhat like uh, kind of uh, impatient uh, or let's say g5 b5 and so on yeah definitely it's a nice play by Wesley of course 
so we have uh, Hikaru winning against Allen. Then mm-hmm. Jordan uh, drew uh, with this nice trick, as we saw. And mm-hmm. uh, Maxim Karyakin uh, ended in a draw. I guess it, it is some kind of uh, solid London system, which we don't have to go th- check everything. And uh, Ali Reza drew against uh, Jan Nepomniachtchi. Was it something important? Uh, oh, wow. That's an interesting... But wait, why it is just pawn down? Yes. I mean, even with the pawn, black keeps some winning chances. But with the pawn down, how did he survive? Probably Jan played very fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes uh, I don't understand these moves. So like, oh, okay, you... I mean, strategically, this is the right move. I no doubts in that. But then also you are giving uh, some chances for knight e4, f5, f6. So, mm-hmm. okay, bishop e4, uh, queen h4. Yeah, white has all the pieces in the game, so at least from practical point of view. Yeah, white because of been... this knight, uh, knight is just uh, doing, I mean, sitting here, they're doing nothing actually, yeah, f5. And of course, rook e4 uh, is very bad because of, Knight e4, queen e4, and just f6, or I don't know, but I think it's just very bad. <laughs> Something must be uh, happening here. Yeah, I guess f6. Yeah, f6 should be. Uh, h3 is protected. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and then we have bishop d7, f6, queen f6. Ah, okay, so it got liquidated into this end game. Okay, I see it. Mm hmm. No, it, it, I think it seemed like uh, uh, black is a healthy pawn, but... Yeah, you know, uh, uh, there are certain positions that I, uh, I love, for example, uh, Daniel Dubov's uh, preparation. There are certain positions that uh, even the engine can give advantage to one side, but they are easier to play for another. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, like this one, pawn up yeah. for black, no immediate threats, but you just push the pawn e4 yeah, for white, I've, just absolutely. push it forward, you figure out how you defend. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, so it is fifth win in a row, my uh, my mistake, It's uh, I thought it was uh, it was four wins in a row, but uh, fifth win in a row for Anish, excellent, wow. excellent. And uh, Nils won against uh, David Anton Guiharo, I think uh, David... Uh, needs to solve his blunders in time pressure uh mm-hmm. yesterday he blundered a whole rook against jordan uh van forest uh and here magnus carlson won against mamed by the way uh i did predict this <laughs> uh that magnus will win so it's not a big surprise but okay we can do this if you if you uh are interested uh just to have predictions uh for the next uh Sure. Game. Can... Or if you want, we can take a short break. It's up to you. Of course, uh, we can uh, predict the games uh, for the next round. So we, ha- I have the games for the next round. And uh, we can just take maybe three to four yeah. games. We don't have to take all the mm-hmm. games because, uh, no. Uh, Chad, also, I would like you to uh, predict uh, the results of, uh, I mean, next game, next match. Uh, and uh, we also will predict let's see it's a fun competition but let's do it let's do it yeah so anish giri versus nils grandilius uh yeah i think everyone would would predict the same result no so we remove that from the betting <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, Jan Nepomniachtchi versus Magnus Carlsen. Definitely, we need we need uh, predictions here. We definitely need predictions here. One zero zero one or draw. You mean from me or from the chat? Uh, all of us. Let's do all of us. <laughs> I'd say zero one. Zero one. Okay. Yes. So zero one uh, is what. Um, Mihailo thinks of uh, the game between Jan versus Magnus. Um, okay, I will take, I will be brave and take uh, 1 0. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, most likely no one will take, so that's why I'm taking it. <laughs> okay, so draw Carlton game, uh, part sir, 101. So, okay, uh, the next name is a bit difficult for me to pronounce, but uh, I will try. Aegon Tar Kariente first. So he also draw. So we, everyone, uh, or let's say, uh, so far we see draw and uh, we are brave we predicted uh, you predicted zero one i predicted one zero mm-hmm. and um let's see if any other uh interesting yeah. Aegon targaryen the first that the reference to uh, uh the game of thrones okay uh, ah yes of thanks. course Star- uh, yeah 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 when when it is uh, yeah of course now after you uh, mention <laughs> yes <laughs> but when i am reading uh, and predicting it's hard for me so uh let's predict uh, wesley so hikaru wesley so hikaru let's see my prediction is draw hikaru didn't lose a single game in this tournament apparently yeah, I, I predict draw between uh, Wesley uh, and Hikaru. Um, so uh, I you... predict Wesley's win because he won two games in a row. Okay, so nice, be... nice. That's nice. Game is on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have standings uh, after uh, round seven. Anish Kiri leading by one point, one full point, and Magnus Carlsen. So that guy and this guy are just there. Uh, it's some Twitter uh, stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Magnus Carlsen is in second place. Uh, and um, you know, uh, if you are uh, it, uh, so top eight qualify for the knockouts, and uh, Anish and Magnus are in one and two places, they can only meet in the finals. So uh-huh. you know, because they go one eight and uh, so on, so you can only meet. But of course, it's a long, uh, long uh, story, yeah. And Levon Aronian and uh, Daniel Dubov. This is a very interesting game for me. And uh, I would, uh, I uh, I think uh, Daniel is in eight. Both are on three and a half points. Uh, so whom would you pick? Levon lost two in a row. Uh, Daniel lost draw and lost. I don't know. I guess a draw. Ah, uh, I I I would also get, uh, take a draw. But yesterday, did you see the blunder uh, which Daniel did in the opening against Rajabov in the cattle and uh, it, it like oh, very no, early in the not, okay I okay so uh, it, it, it was uh, yeah I I I will take uh, Levon here. Uh, despite uh, him losing two games and uh, uh, sorry which one uh, which uh, what was your prediction I forgot uh, draw I, draw. Uh, I okay. thought it would be a draw I yeah. think uh, this is uh, truly the mathematician talking right from statistical <laughs> point of view yeah I think after two losses Levon may just want yeah. one, one draw okay, uh, that's, okay. that's what Phoenix, uh, Ber- Berlin uh, Queen d4 Queen e4 Ah. Yes, it's coming. Guys, there you go. Draw. Oh. Yes. We have one Just game like left. That. Thank you. Just like that. Okay. Just like that. So this is uh, the, uh, the moment you see A4. So we, we already understand it's going to be a draw. So we are right in one uh, game. Yeah, and I think uh, Levon uh, versus Daniel will also be a draw uh, as we have seen Bishop. Uh, I think this, uh, I, I will just show how it is going to be a draw. So something like this. Uh, sh- uh, okay, short castle, Bishop g7 and knight e2, Bishop e6, knight d4, Bishop d7. So we can just stay a little bit here uh, because most likely they will repeat uh, as it happened in the uh, yesterday. So we are doing good at predictions. I, I like predictions and uh, I although I don't really follow the statistics all the time, but I do believe that it plays uh, an important role. Uh, so Levon is thinking here or is it some internet connection? It's very strange. 
It's really yeah, strange. Yeah, Daniel played this line for sure. Yesterday and... he played. Mm -hmm. Yesterday he oh, played. Oh, even yesterday. Okay, yesterday, I know he played yes. it before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yesterday he played this. And uh, I'm really surprised that... Uh, yeah, okay, so we will have uh, what I predicted. Bishop b5, I don't think... He would go yeah, this it. is the kind of position I was talking about. The uh, engine gives white advantage, but Absolutely. black has two bishops and safe yeah. king. And like, uh, yeah, you take my d6 pawn, whatever. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, how does the line go? Bishop b5, yes, b2, uh, I can castle, short castle. Mm -hmm. So this is ah, uh, okay, just give me a minute, yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, I think it is knight, uh. Knight b3, mm -hmm. a6, bishop to. Um, yeah, I think this, something like this mm -hmm. happens. And queen okay. to. Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure about this because, you know, and then uh, black has some compensation uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I, I don't think this, we will see this. I think uh, uh, after two losses, yeah, you are right. Uh, most likely, Levon is uh, going to repeat some kind of thing which we have on the board. Or maybe he can play something positional, you know, just castle short, whatever, and uh, put the knight on d5 or something and uh, play. Ah, and then to have c3. So what uh, Mihailo means is something like knight d2, bishop e6, just to go knight d5. Short castle, something like c3. And play a very like, sound yeah. positional line with barely any advantage, but yeah. risk free position. Yeah. Maybe that's what we will see. Place. We will see. I think uh, if he plays castle knight d2, most likely uh, it will be a repetition. Uh, so, Egan Targer uh, Rinte first asks Is there any match between Wesley and Hikaru that wasn't a draw before they finished development? in champions chess tour uh honestly i don't recall everything but uh yeah so yeah i think knight d2 happened okay slightly different and now knight d4 should be happening so we will see uh the draw which ah. i mentioned ah you're so confident of that yeah okay uh because this is the same draw which happened yesterday uh between okay. uh i can somebody help me with that? It uh, Daniel Dubo was black, but I think uh, it was Maxim Vashelagraf, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, I don't know. I unfortunately didn't check it. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's 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 difficult to remember it, all these draws. Question to the chat. Yes. Yes, it Please is a question to chat. Please help us. So uh, we do have. Live board and uh, Knight Daniel Dubov is Karyakin. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, Yogi 101 answered. So it is uh, it is uh, Karyakin versus Dubov. Uh, so Knight D2, uh, Queen D2. No, Levon plays. Mm. So that's good. That's good. I like it. So he wants to play, but he, he wants, wants to play. stay away from the main lines, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Bishop G7, mm. Long Castle. Uh, short castle. That's what's being played right now. Yes. Uh, no, no. I'm just uh, making the move. Most likely uh, on the, on, on my right hand side is the live board. Uh, so, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, on my right hand side is the live board. Mm -hmm. So we, we we will have the game. So that's very nice. I I like uh, when they you know it's not finishing in ten moves. <laughs> So let's uh, let's jump uh, once uh, to Magnus Carlsen's game uh, because that's our uh, one of the three predictions. So, okay, uh, whom did I pick? I almost forgot. Ah, I picked Nep uh, Jan. So, Ooh. what is this? Actually, what? Chris Christoph told one very funny point that is, don't play b5 and g5 to no, you know, otherwise your king will be weakened. And okay, <laughs> he uh, black did not play g5, but uh, the pawn on g7 is not there, so that's the reason perhaps he went for long castle. And we see g3 blitzing out like this is definitely not some kind of preparation, but uh. I like White's uh, position. I mean, not not 
not because it's mm. it's better or something i feel it's very easy to play uh play uh, moves like king b1 uh just rook e1 and to put pressure if once e4 is played then white oh. is going to occupy this nice square and at some point break this e4 and uh, that's just a much better position here yeah so, you know uh, uh, i agree with you Hari. Uh, uh, i think that the white is uh, from human point is better because the king is safer yeah yeah king so black yeah, has absolutely. a very nice center but there's it's hard to do anything about it mm -hmm. um and white has last pawn islands uh, no weak pawns so yes. black should somehow try create a passed pawn with d4 i guess yeah but i think it would be really hard to do yeah d4 uh, would be very nice if uh, black uh, black manages to you know uh, get with some weird tactics uh, you know mm -hmm. some d4 d3 kind of thing but mm -hmm. right now i do not see that coming i i prefer uh, jan's uh, position also because i picked <laughs> him to win the game <laughs> Ah, okay, let's see. I want to have I'm, Magnus. Okay, I'm little, bit, I'm little bit uh, biased <laughs> towards my prediction. <laughs> so G three blitzed out, and Magnus now is thinking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What could be the? Uh, oh, knight C eight. Really? Uh -huh. Okay. That's, that's some oh, ideas. Some ideas. The king. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, so here I would like to play rook uh, he1, uh, which, uh, yeah. which was played. Uh, I, I expect rook uh, he8 here, just to defend mm -hmm. this pawn. Yeah. But then uh, white should somehow uh, break this balance, right? If black manages to keep these two pawns and uh, somehow get this knight b6, and uh, in future, you know, to get queen c5, a5, b4, it can be annoying. So it is mm -hmm. important for uh, white to clarify the situation here in the center. I think uh, mm -hmm. this is, this is uh, we have Magnus Carlsen uh, on camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, from his camera, I see he's very confident. Yeah. He's very confident and uh, yeah, he has space. He has the center. I didn't yeah. see this knight c8 maneuver. I like it a lot because I, I think... didn't know what to do with the knight. Yeah, now it's yeah, very clear. Yeah, mm -hmm. knight c8 uh, and knight b6 protecting d5 pawn and uh, e5 pawn is protected with uh, by this rook on e8. So Sveshnikov is uh, an opening which uh, Magnus Carlsen feels very very well. All these positions uh, he has prepared. Uh, uh, for his match against uh, uh, Fabiano Caruana and uh, yeah. in 2019 uh, he was playing all his match preparation uh, and uh, he achieved uh, excellent results with uh, the Sveshnikov uh, mm -hmm. Sicilian I don't I don't remember actually him losing in 2019 uh, in Sveshnikov maybe I, I, I uh, maybe I missed something but uh, yeah, he, he feels very well all these um, small details, uh, the maneuvers and the initiative. Uh, I mean, because mm -hmm. Sveshnikov contains various variations and uh, each of them has some different uh, uh, dynamics. And yeah, uh, yeah uh, I like... Uh, black's uh, position i mean no i still i i still i am biased towards my <laughs> decision but still i changed my mind i also like black's position now because yeah. i didn't see this maneuver in knight c8 now it's yeah. very natural where all the pieces go yeah rooks yeah. are in the center knight b6 maybe knight c4 maybe a5 b4 maybe just b4 sacrifice you know and then mm -hmm. you push the d pawn you push the e pawn those pawns can just crush white yeah oh queen yeah. c2 for two forcing moves in a row, by the way, by, by Jan. He's putting pressure. The queen is coming to f5 or to h7, and Magnus yeah. is going to sacrifice something now, I have a feeling. I, I think uh, it's almost certain he will uh, he will do something like that. So, uh, is d4 a move? Because after d4, bishop b7. And d3 doesn't uh, give anything. I mean, I can take it, but... Even if I have a move like bishop mm -hmm. e4, just, uh, I mean, 
this is a monster bishop and uh, what yeah. white is better uh so still d4 is not that effective but uh, can he do something like some crazy stuff with b4 or e5 b4 because I would say I would... it depends if he wants a draw or wants to win if he wants to win then a5 probably is the move yeah. you know yeah. queen h7 just to go b4 go uh, go crazy like but if if he wants a draw then maybe d4 just simplifies the position too much you know d4 yes, bishop yes. b7 king b7 c d4 e d4 queen e7 like lots of exchanges but that's only if he wants a draw because yeah. uh, that pawn on d4 probably would be a weakness rather than yeah exactly uh, i i i think uh, he he will go for uh, some a5 before but he played f6 uh, we have f6 mm. on board just okay. defending uh, so i guess uh, he knows jan would just pick up the pawn if uh, he gives so maybe that's some psychological thing they work together uh, for mm. long, uh, for many uh, months i i guess for the world championship match or something yeah yeah i would say it's hard for white to to find what to do f4 seems like the only plan but it yeah. doesn't even achieve anything you know yeah so uh, I, I like black now. I, it's hard to find a plan for white. You cannot you cannot push a, like d5 pawn is the only weakness in black position, but you cannot put pressure on it even if you use all your pieces. <laughs> and so, uh, there are no pawn breaks that I like, so I prefer black. Yeah, he played. He went bishop to g2. I think he should have done this uh, long time ago. Definitely, um, f4 is the only way uh white white can create uh you know some uh, weakness here or oh, maybe as f4 then maybe takes and maybe knight g4 attack force yeah. e4 then come back but yeah it, now the e pawn would be a past one that yeah. makes a difference right yeah uh also i uh, i mean always white has to watch out for this kind of d4 because bishop on g2 is also hanging like i mean not not immediately but uh, he must be careful uh just now i i was thinking like f4 can he take e takes f4 g takes f4 and rook d e6 because both c2 and g2 which are actually the squares which uh the knight should go in order to defend the rook on e1 is occupied uh one second Harry. i don't i don't have to capture g takes f4 maybe i have no. knight d5 or uh, uh knight jumps you know uh, i don't have knight d5 yeah, yeah. knight f5 uh, knight f5 of knight course f5. uh yeah knight f5, knight f5 is six takes takes so uh, and then i lose the pawn but but it doesn't is... matter queen f2 or you can even play knight d4 i have all it. my good yeah, pieces. yeah. My no, all definitely pieces are good so definitely that's what I'm... Mm -hmm. yeah no, e takes f4 is definitely uh, not a move which you should make uh, after having such a, a center. But we do have uh, a rook d2. Mm. So he did calculate all these moves with d4, I guess. So d4. Uh, ah, no, c takes. No. Uh, I, I don't understand. c takes d4, yeah. He takes d4. He takes d4. No, maybe first uh, I can take this. Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah, because uh, knight c2 is anyway not possible. So king c2. Mm -hmm. Oh, takes the king d4. is so exposed. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I, I don't know. This is, this looks. Uh, king bit... takes knight g2, and uh, yeah, white is doing fine. Yeah. Oh. Or knight f5. No, knight f5. Uh, I was active. actually thinking about knight f5, um, but okay, maybe rook c6. It's of course uh, not over or something, but knight c4, knight b2. It's it, it game goes on. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> we can go further in this, but uh, uh, I'm sure they are both calculating this. One. Yeah, and uh, also what happens to knight c4? Mm hmm. Uh, because knight takes e4, b takes e4, and at some point you just go rook e d8 and uh, d4. But I'm a little bit worried about this move f4, actually. Uh huh. Because after. Hold on, e4... don't I have d4 and d3? At... Uh, but you don't take on d7. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, no, we have uh, some moves here. Uh, I think uh, after. 
okay rook d2 has been played and uh, rook rook e d8 and mm -hmm. black is still e prepared one. okay yep yeah okay. and at some point we are going to see d4 here definitely black is playing for a win don't yeah. you think yes uh, black absolutely is the one on top yeah a5 time. yeah no for sure uh, black is playing uh for more than a draw here and uh, why shouldn't he because he has a yeah. nice structure all he needs yeah. to remove is this pawn on c3 yeah. and then it's just uh yeah yeah i want to take back one statement what I is that that black's king is uh ah, vulnerable <laughs> now i switch to white's king is vulnerable <laughs> Yeah, uh, okay, uh, uh, of course, uh, I mean, f4 might be possible here. Uh, so let's say something like knight f5, f4, but still, uh, rook c6, b4, it looks really, really uh, dangerous to me what uh, happened in the game. And as I see, Levon is uh, up a pawn, but uh, probably the game will uh, end in a draw. Still, it's a long way, but. Uh, I see that it can be okay. Jan on camera, we can see, mm -hmm. we can see, but I don't see his, uh, I don't see Magnus camera, but yeah, I can see he's he's not happy. I don't think he's happy with this position. No, you know, no. it could be one of those positions where engine gives zeros, yeah, and um, yeah, this now it. Now it's definitely white the one on in trouble. Yeah, sometimes these zero point zero zeros can be very tricky. Don't uh, don't trust them all the time because it is you who has to play, not uh, not zero point zero zero. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah it's so hard to to stay. Uh, you know, when you're analyzing uh, some game with the engine. To, to stay on top of the engine rather than follow its lead. It's so mm -hmm. tempting to just wait mm -hmm. and to wait for Stockfish or Leela to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you're like a child and that's an adult. Mm -hmm. uh, and then suddenly you lose that hand when, when you play the game and you're like confused and you don't know what to do. So ideally you should wanna say, okay, it's zeros. I would play this move. I like this move. Uh -huh. Stockfish beat the hell out of you, and then you understand, <laughs> oh, that was a bad move. And then you figure out, oh, maybe that's why it was a bad move. I'm going to play this move instead, and then you get beaten one more time. And then you, oh, that was bad. Maybe this position is not as good as I thought. Yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, for example, I had this discussion about uh, uh, some people just don't want to go to some positions with uh, weaker players. Yeah, because they are too symmetrical, too drawish, yeah, and so on and so on. And, uh, and there's a very good argument. I like it. If you're a better player, you can play any position for a win. Uh, just uh, try holding that 0.0, .0 dead equal position against the computer. Do, yeah, play. If in ten moves you're not much worse, then <laughs> yes. But usually any position you play, uh, let's say from move fifteen or so, where more or less all the pieces are developed, yeah. play ten moves against Stockfish, and if you maintain equality, that's the equal position. Maybe yeah. you're actually better. Yeah. You know? But if you can't, uh, yeah, go ahead. And I, play I, for I, any color. I I also think that um, uh, like the difference in strength, like. Uh, I don't know, 30 points or 50 points or however you calculate the ratings. Uh, it's mainly in the end game rather than on uh, uh, at the opening. Like, uh, I, I don't know um, how accurate is, uh, you know, the, the ratings, you know, because some players play more, some players do not play, some players get a chance and so on. So I don't want to go into that details, but let's say uh, the difference in uh, player strength uh, we can see when uh, you reach some kind of end games because um, that's when one player feels more confident than other player. Uh, I mean, the the difference between the player's confidence, I think, changes uh, significantly in end games. And perhaps, like you mentioned, to to draw against the show, uh, against uh, any uh, any of this zero point zero zero against an engine. Okay, I I wouldn't take that. I, no, I, I, I certainly make a draw. 
you will not make a draw <laughs> if you don't get a match worth ah, okay. and move. No, there is yes. no chance whatsoever. Yeah, but absolutely, if you can maintain equality in ten moves, that's that's very equal. Uh, meanwhile, I uh, I want to uh, uh, remind. Uh, I mean, I want to tell that uh, Timur lost his game against Maxim. So here, I would like to discuss one important point: the psychology after missing a win or uh, losing a drawn position or um blundering these are like a shock shock uh, uh emotion so you you don't estimate uh, you don't uh, uh, you don't see that coming and you it happens how does players uh, cope up with such things this is always uh, a very important topic which mm -hmm. uh, which is not really addressed that much because uh, it's hard it's it's really hard because each player is different from another and uh, each of them uh, even the situation is different so from mathematical point of view you need to make a lot of statistics or excel sheets and so on so i am not i am not into that but to keep it simple i i really uh, am interested to you know to know how uh, it works of course uh, uh, you can tell your students or yourself yes, I, uh... I would tell my story. Uh, so first of all, there is no recipe. It's not like you learn that and it works. Uh, certain things work for some people and certain things don't work for some people. Um, I, I remember Magnus Carlsen, 2015. Uh, I think he had his peak rating or somewhere close to his peak rating. He was playing the uh, in Norway, the super tournament in Norway. And he was first round, he was playing against Veselin Topalov. I don't know if you remember that. He lost on time, Six, right? Uh, he forgot what was the time control yeah, of the yeah, tournament. Yeah, they yeah. changed it on move 61. He was mm -hmm. thinking, calculating, he had a winning position. Mm -hmm. uh, he just calculated how to win, and then he ran out of time and lost that game. Mm -hmm. So terrible loss. Winning, he, he was winning the whole game, outplayed Veselin. Do you know what happened next? What Veselin happened? Yeah. Scored like five and a half out of six in a top-notch super tournament. He just yeah. crushed everyone. Yeah. Magnus couldn't win for like next five games or something. Absolutely. Classical event. Absolutely, you know, yeah. In, where you have time, where you have team, you can call anyone, you can do anything. He still couldn't recover. So mm -hmm. I think it's uh, the, the shorter the time control and the distance between the games, it's almost impossible. My, yeah. my story was... Uh, I, I had one tournament in Pardubice, uh, Czech Republic, seven, yeah. eight years ago. And I started very poorly. I won the open tournament, hundreds of players and uh, lots of GMs. So you have to score like five out of five and you would still tie for first, you know, like a very big tournament. And so I, I first game I won, second game I drew with white against much less rated opponent and I mm -hmm. had a worse position. Mm -hmm. In the third game, I got checkmated in 25 moves. My king was literally on E5, <laughs> checkmated like vertical mate with queen and rooks. My king alone is on E5 against my uh, weaker player. In Nimzo, in Nimzo, Indian. How, how did you checking? manage? How did you manage to do this? Yeah, it's really, uh, yeah. Uh, so it was a terrible, terrible game. <laughs> so I locked myself in the room, and my coach Grabinski and my friends told me, "Let's go, let's go have some fun, let's go have some pizza." I said, "Leave me alone." They dragged me out, <laughs> and we went for pizza. I had some drinks, I had a great <laughs> evening. I'm not recommending that. It's very unprofessional, but sometimes. <laughs> You need, if you have a terrible tournament, you need something extraordinary to lift you up. You know what happened after that? Every evening we went for pizza and enjoyed ourselves instead of preparing for the games. I won all six games and I shared the first prize and I beat Viktor Lasnichka in the last round in a fascinating fashion. So the whole tournament I was on fire, six in okay. a row. <laughs> and after that, my, I rose to 2650 in, in half a year. So uh, from, that, from that game. But it could have been down the hill. Yeah, so there's no universal recipe. Exactly. So uh, that's what I always tell uh, when someone uh, asks for suggestions regarding this topic. Like uh, I want to stress that there is uh, the point that there is no universal recipe and uh, you must pick what suits you the, uh, the most. And uh, there is a question from uh, Cyclo Paman. Uh, I have recently started following chess recently. And since then, I haven't seen players like Jan or Ding or MVL play well. 
is it a temporary thing or their peak has already come to an end now uh this uh this is uh, uh we I, I cannot generalize that this is uh, th this is the first thing and uh, we have seen them playing online and uh, we need to wait uh and see them uh, of course maxim played but the other players uh, you mentioned uh just just to give you an idea yan yan won uh, the russian championship right uh, in uh, in december i guess uh, russian super final I'm not sure, but he won a tournament uh, in December. He won. Uh, I think chat can help us a bit in this. I am not too good with all, uh, with the memory of uh, memorizing all these things. Uh, but uh, yeah, we we are yet to see uh, Ding and uh, Maxim Yan playing in the candidates, and uh, of course it takes some time. You know, we are all sitting at home. We our routines have changed, our uh, way of thinking, way of functioning, and, uh, uh, you know, we are humans. We uh, we need uh, the social interaction and uh, we need uh, some time to ad adapt to the new situation. But we will see once uh, candidates, you know, resumes. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, I think that's their main goal. So they are uh, leaving all the openings uh for that they are not revealing their best lines they are yeah. saving energy and they picking uh, sidelines instead of their actual lines so that could be the 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 reason uh for that so yeah so uh any uh, uh i just want to welcome those who are joining uh you know time to time uh, i don't get the chance to say hello to uh, everyone so hello everyone who has just joined uh, the stream and uh, here we uh, we have seen some kind of off draw for is it, can we say it's an offer to draw hmm. do you think we'll just have queen f5 queen d7 uh, from what i see uh, in the camera i i no 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 yan wants to fight yan wants to fight yes because hmm. uh, now the, the the rook has to move and uh, obviously he cannot move the uh, i mean apart from d7 mm -hmm. wherever you go i'm going to capture the pawn so e4 mm -hmm. and i like white if if i if i manage to get the queen to e3 let's say uh hypothetically i mean it's it, it's really difficult to do all these things maybe not maybe not i just get queen to f5 a queen to e2 queen to e3 and then mm -hmm. just uh, expand g4 h4 uh, bring the bishop to e2 keep an eye on c4 so that you know some kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, trick mm -hmm. here this pawn is not really in any kind of danger you can of course defend this uh, with rook d2 or so i like white i like white here yeah i don't see a way for black to win so the only thing i can think of is triple the heavy pieces on the b file mm -hmm. but uh, and then rook b3 rook a3 some kind of sacrifice but that's that's just stretching the yeah uh, that's really the far <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, this is an idea of course uh, you need to um uh, one needs to see how we can fight you know uh, mm -hmm. uh it, it it is true that uh, uh just players must understand how good or bad their position it is also important equally important to understand how bad their position is and uh, not just always think that you are winning uh, but wait we i uh, did 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 we miss something before uh, i think this is the point if i did not make any mistake ah okay that's it i'm that's not sure oh but queen Hold h7 on. Ouch. I think he blundered something. Hold on, rook d7. Uh, oh, uh, you know what is pretty? Like, uh, of course, uh, this is not going to happen, but uh, black has rook d4. <laughs> Otherwise, okay. it would be really nice after rook uh, d7. <laughs> I, oops, sorry. Uh, uh -huh. Rook d7. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not possible. So rook d7. I'm sure Jan is calculating bishop e4. Yeah, so, uh, but Magnus seemed very confident. Uh, yeah. So maybe we're missing something. No, bishop e8 is uh, definitely his bishop point e8. here. And uh, uh, queen h7, you have rook d7. 
Is that it? Is that the end of I, the validation? There I, are no checks. Yes, can I check take checks. this? How about this? What do you... Okay, I want to know how do you like this? Is it lost no. or not? It's probably lost because after... Yeah, I just want to check on A8. No, the rook is yeah. hanging on rook. H7, but yeah. I thought rook E7 is just one yeah, check. Yeah, on yeah, also. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, bishop e4 uh, might be something which he's calculating. Of course, uh, you know, he's following the idea of rook b8 and uh, so on. So he just went mm -hmm. rook 1 d2. Maybe he's just wait. Ah, yeah, that's clever. His idea is to take bishop e4. And when he plays bishop mm -hmm. e8, he gets queen d1. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That is the idea. Oh, black is in trouble. Yeah, now queen d1. You want? Uh, Cyclo Paman, I think uh, the game which you are uh, referring to is uh, from an online tournament in yeah. uh, last year where uh, he uh, he got into uh, an excellent preparation by Anand from uh, his match against Topalov or I think uh, yeah. So let's see. Uh, he went queen e two. Um, A queen e two. Okay. Queen e two. I actually don't know what was wrong uh, with queen d one. It seems a little bit puzzled. Perhaps he doesn't want to give any chance. I I don't know. I I think queen d one mm. was good. Yeah, white has a risk free advantage. Yeah, that's it. That's and this this bishop would be so nice if it can reach to d3 but i'm Ooh. afraid <laughs> i'm afraid yeah. that it's not going to happen in uh, in this whole game yeah black has very passive position has to hold the d5 pawn um in some point if black becomes very passive then b3 blow could, could work out but if black has to become very passive first yeah so white would or push the pawn to a4, put the pawn on f5, put the bishop on g6 or somewhere like this, and stand like this. Please don't hit me. That's I the think way uh, he should play f5 somehow, I feel. I mean, good or bad, I don't like this move for several reasons, but okay, what is this bishop c6? Hmm. Uh, a very strange move. Ah, so he is again offering Jan to go queen h5 and bishop e8, if I am not mistaken. No, I don't think Jan would take a draw here. He wouldn't lose to Stockfish here. Sorry? Just do just do nothing. And, <laughs> no, no, no. And you won't no, 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 no. Against an engine, of course, no chance. Okay, uh, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I think against against, the, against engine, uh, I would say... And for me, any position, I don't have a chance. So <laughs> it's so difficult. Unless maybe some Berlin uh, end games or something like that. Uh, even even those end games, uh, they are much better compared to like maybe 15 years ago, uh, where uh, computer would play really strange in uh, yeah. end games. You know, he would just push f4, h4, and create uh, the weakness. Yeah. So we see queen e3. I I expect queen b6. I, mm -hmm. I I think queen b6 is the move which we will see. Mm -hmm. F5, F5 we have. Oh, okay, that makes sense. To yeah. have bishop takes e4 all over, always, and then potential pass g pawn. Yeah. And yeah, you know what I'm thinking? Uh, sometimes you can, let's say, black goes king b8. I have a, like a tactical idea. <laughs> king what b8. Is this? Uh -huh, okay, let me show. Yeah, go ahead. I, I have some idea that's okay, that's a silly move, but what can you blunder? I like b4 move, yes. So if, if black that and now rook b4 could be no bishop b5, it's fine, but uh, the thing is, you are, you are anyway. Uh, I, I saw that, but okay, the, uh, the point is this uh, nice trick, uh, you know, uh, you can always blunder this move. This is yeah. easy, it's easily blunderable if that's the word. Yeah, this this is a, a nice motive, uh, and uh, uh, yeah. People want to see a bar evaluation, we don't, <laughs> we, uh, want to, we want to keep it. 
uh, human. Uh, actually, uh, you can see the bar, uh, oh. but the but the I mean I mean to say for uh, for the uh, person who asked, we cannot see. Uh, but the uh, thing we are not keeping the bar is um, that we will be biased uh, in uh, telling the motive. We will never uh, go to the motives, and we would just try to find why it is better for uh, advantage for white and uh, and uh, uh, you can surely have the bar from just one before uh, aside so you can uh, listen to our chat and at the same time have uh, the mm -hmm. engine on so if if you prefer that way uh, it's it's up to you because um, surely i would like to uh, the the main reason why i am not having engine is like uh, uh, it's very easy for us uh, to criticize the players. Um, you know, why did he miss such a simple move and uh, how could mm -hmm. he not see it, etc. But as a player, I would like to give the perspective of player uh, how many variations uh, while you are playing you need to calculate in order to reach to a certain uh, decision. And that is something which is uh, very important uh, for audience to understand. Like, you know, uh, you solve, uh, you know, the solution of a puzzle or, and you don't understand fr uh, from where, uh, uh, what kind of research, what kind of thought process went in and you finally mm -hmm. came to this conclusion. So that is the reason why I am not uh, having the engine here. Um, but uh, you can, of course, check uh, on chest 24, you will have the bar and... Uh, yeah, then you will know who is winning <laughs> and you can tell us. <laughs> <laughs> there are some changes, some moves have been played, yeah? Oh, yes. Uh, I don't know why I don't have this. Let's, let, no, it's not this. Uh, I think uh, uh, what happened actually. Ah, it's not king b4, rook d7, yeah, queen h6. And uh, yeah, so now the idea is not b4. I, I thought initially he wanted to go mm -hmm. before, but no. I guess uh, he, he would just continue h4, uh, queen e3, or uh, just keep the queen on h6, and mm -hmm. then just g5. Uh, I just this... too many things to watch out for. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. King, if black is making moves like king a6 and king a7, uh, something has gone wrong uh, for black mm -hmm. here. So maybe my prediction will be right. I am just. Uh, yeah. I am just. I was definitely wrong. But I no, but actually you were very good position. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I I think knight c4 was little bit uh, quick. Uh, like he could have uh, prepared to get b4. I, I thought he would go for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Magnus is uh, worse here. Okay. So he is trying to create some counter chances, as I see here. Okay, one of the points I would like to say is the after bishop c4, which seems very nice, mm -hmm. but uh, d takes yeah. c4, uh, rook takes d8, and uh, black has this nice move, e3, and if I rook... I thought queen g1 check. Oh, yes, of course, queen g1 I is I think it's uh, brilliant. both, but... Yeah, yeah, queen g1 is brilliant after king a2, bishop b3. We had similar motif, uh, uh, mate motif yesterday. Uh, but uh, yeah, queen g1, rook d1, of course, uh, bishop d1. Um, I I won't. I don't want to disappoint you, but okay, there is some move like this. Oh, but no. uh, okay, it's not important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, this is the point. Of course, uh, Jan would not go for this. He went instead queen to e3. Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. the right way. And we have rook b8, g5. Yeah. So, uh, key four was threatening, uh, yes, yes. So, mm -hmm. uh, the threat is uh, rook takes, uh, I cannot make the move. So, rook takes yeah. e4, d takes e4, queen b6, king b6, yeah. and rook to d8. I can't make the move because it's uh, black to move, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so g5, bishop d7. I think Magnus is in trouble. Can we have Magnus camera so we can, uh, Okay. This is the position, bishop to d7. Mm -hmm.
yeah so we we uh you know uh, black is trying to uh, somehow create some counter chances here uh, and i see nepo very confident and uh you know he has a nice structure of course you know you should always watch out for all kinds of tricks like i don't know queen c5 rook b2 or queen a3 uh, of course it's not working uh, in this particular position because of rook e4 uh, but it's easy to miss mm -hmm. and uh, we we will have uh, some kind of time scramble here yeah you know uh, jan is always confident uh, yes. I, in 2013 i was playing european um, european individual and he was sitting next to me uh -huh. so it means first of all he didn't have a fantastic tournament if he was sitting next to me in the middle of the court <laughs> we had three and a half out of six uh, -huh. uh okay jan was 27 10 back in yeah the, back. yeah yeah and he blundered against the mm -hmm. uh, grandmaster Grigoran from army and i'm watching him blunder like a mm -hmm. piece for just two pawns and he's very nothing confident went <laughs> nothing went through we're both seeing that he's yeah. blundered and he <laughs> says no that's all the plan and he crushed it and then he won a few mo uh, games in a row and shared the first prize even though he had wow. three and a half out of six in mm -hmm. an open tournament with literally 100 gms yeah incredible so he's always yeah. confident yeah he's that's always never, confident that's yeah. never a tell yeah know? yeah uh, uh, the, to the question anish is uh, definitely uh, pressing against uh, nils um we are going to stick with uh, the game between jan nepomnia she was uh, uh, against magnus carlsen um and uh, maxim won against uh, timur rajabov as okay we already discussed this i think and uh is there anything in i see that sergey is doing well against ali reza he's probably close to winning if i they should take c4 just play what, okay what... let's let's get back let's get back i was uh, just thinking about queen takes a5 mate <laughs> that I, yeah, can somehow... I, I i don't see magnus very happy uh in from his camera so rook g8 he just oh blundered. Goodness. He just blundered. What is what is happening? He just blundered. The B king runs to B8, and then after a rook D6, how does black meet rook D, D6? Just check on G1. Yeah, he just blundered. Oh. Hold on. So queen E5 is the move, let's say. What happens next? Uh, rook to G1, okay. king A2, D2. Okay. Uh, c4 oh just queen b3 mate of course yeah yeah he just blundered <laughs> oh my goodness okay so i guess uh, you your prediction is going to be true <laughs> uh, okay let me help you a little bit so no no there is nothing the queen no no there is not the queen no, this is uh, completely lost you know uh, if, if uh, 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 so this 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 is uh, yeah. This is the most painful way to uh, lose this game. Uh, as I, he had everything under control, perhaps if he doesn't push any of these pawns, okay, he's holding the game. But he went for it, uh, which which is of course mm -hmm. the right thing to do. But then uh, this queen, why to have queen on g5? I mean, any other square was uh, totally fine, you know and hmm. uh yeah this this is just lost queen e5 and i think rook g1 king a2 dc4 uh even let's say if oh he, he went for b4 oh that's just yeah, yeah c takes b3 king b2 e3 this is what we so have I, I did guess tripling pieces on the b file and i did guess b4 but i thought that would be bad for black it turns out to be just yeah bishop f5 uh, should be uh Ah, no, sorry, sorry. Queen, rook the rook is hanging. Rook is Hold hanging, on. yeah. But why did he play yeah, but E3? The piece is... Oh, I maybe it's not over. Rook A1, wow. Excellent. That's that's really pretty. After King A1, B2, King B1, uh, Bishop A2, King ah. A2, and uh, checkmate. Wow. And if not this, what do... Maybe queen e5. What else can can we do? Uh, yeah. Oh, Magnus is happy, I guess. Of course, he he is just looking for the final 
final touch. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, rook a1. Rook a1 is a very, very difficult move. Uh, no, uh, I... Beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's... But, uh, yeah, beautiful and difficult. <laughs> B2, yeah. perhaps, no. B2, yeah, just simply B2. B2, mm-hmm. just B2 and uh, it's over. Yeah, I think he saw it. No, he just took rook d2, but b2 is so... Yeah, I I don't know why not b2. Okay. b2 just wins from the spot. Yeah, so maybe uh, I, I get another the, win. Yeah, he saw this because bishop a2 and... Uh, and queen g1. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cannot defend this. Uh, everything is winning, yeah. Yeah, he's laughing, I can see. <laughs> so uh, perhaps he, he could not believe. <laughs> it's it's a it's a crazy game i i i mean it's not it wasn't an easy game and uh yeah what do you i mean you predicted well so congratulations did i i saw giddy would win against nils he didn't what he else didn't did I predict? no it says a draw it's, i don't know why is this a draw doesn't look like a draw that's a very nice pawn structure, by the way. Queen f2, queen e7, queen d2. I don't understand. Mm. Okay. So, aha. Uh-huh. So. Threefold repetition. Yes, yes, yes. So white is much better maybe winning, but there was a repetition. Yeah, uh, white. I, maybe he missed it. He just missed it. He missed it, yeah. Yeah, so he missed it. Knight d7, queen e7, one. Uh, no, wait a second. This Queen. is one. No, I don't know. Okay, Did anyway, you... so yeah, yeah, both were low on time, I guess. Uh, he just yeah. wanted to. So uh, the results are uh, draw between Anish and Nils. Uh, mm-hmm. Shahriar lost uh, against David. So a nice uh, win for David Anton from the black pieces. Magnus Carlsen won against Jan Nepomniashi. Ali Reza, uh, Sergei Karyakin won against uh, Ali Reza. So Sergei, uh, you know, he had a bad day, but uh, this day is good. Today is good for him. And uh, Timur lost to Maxim. I think uh, his miss, uh, um, miss in the previous game probably played a little role in the uh in today's game i mean next this round and uh, alan drew against uh, jordan mm-hmm. and of course so wesley drew against uh, hikaru uh, i think we all predicted uh, very nice uh, yeah. <laughs> about this game so we can be proud about that and uh, levon aronian uh, drew i think uh, uh, you were right uh, here as well uh, i uh, yeah. i i thought okay yeah okay I did guess well, yeah. Yeah, I thought uh, it, uh, uh, I mean, it, it seemed to me like for some time uh, White could press a bit, but of course it's always very difficult to uh, actually convert these end games into a win because of course E4, F4 and sometimes it can be quite annoying when the rook comes to D2. And uh, as we can see the final position, it's just a draw as rook, rook A3 and rook B3. Uh, so can we have the standings? Uh, do we have the standings, or uh, I think uh, all the games are finished, right? Yeah, we do have. Yes, the all games are finished, and uh, yeah. Before we have the standings, I want to thank you, Harry, for 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 the invitation. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, uh, going uh, uh, after this round. Yeah, thank you. Uh, th- thank you, the chat. Thank you, everyone. I really enjoyed it. It's always fun to watch top-level grandmasters, and listening to you, Harry, commentating is uh, uh, a lovely thing to to be. So, thank you for uh, inviting. Me. Uh, thank you very much, Mihailo, for joining us and uh, sharing your experiences. And uh, yeah, I, uh, nice to comment uh, with you. And uh, looking forward to, to your chessable courses and. Uh, all the best with uh, coaches uh, trainings thank, thank you thank you so much all the best to your courses and to your new twitch channel <laughs> best of luck more subscribers go <laughs> thank you so you heard just follow us and uh, <laughs> these are the standings so yeah thank you Mihailo. okay goodbye Uh,
so we'll just take a short break and uh, we'll be back uh, right away and uh, meanwhile we have uh, some exciting uh, pairings for the next round and uh, yeah i i want the chat to predict uh, the results of the game so this way we can interact and we can uh, discuss on the strategies of uh, the players and uh, as you can see uh, in the standings uh, magnus is uh, catching up and uh, yeah it's going to be great uh, uh, remaining two rounds i expect some draws with the berlins in the last round perhaps so we'll be back uh, soon uh, after a short break how, how is it going with uh, uh, anish uh, anish's game because he's leading so we definitely uh, should magnus win max max demian uh, thinks uh, magnus will win okay so let's let's see um I, I would also think that Magnus uh, will push, but uh, maybe a draw. Uh, after all, it's a Queen's Gambit declined, and uh, it has a uh, reputation of uh, being a very solid opening. So all these uh, moves which we are seeing in the game of Daniel Dubov, uh, Anish Kiri has, is an important discussion, and Wesley So has been using this uh, in the last couple of events and quite successfully he won uh, against Magnus Carlsen uh, or I, I think he even uh, uh, he managed to put pressure on Magnus Carlsen I don't remember he won it um, uh, Dr. Chess Joker asks isn't including h6 bishop h4 yes absolutely h6 uh, bishop h4 is advisable uh, it saves a tempo in some of the lines we can uh, we can uh, but in general, yes, h6, bishop, h4. But sometimes uh, you have to watch out for g4 and g5 ideas. So uh, it's not entirely clear, yes. So knight takes e6. I expect uh, this to end in a draw as probably most of you uh, did expect already. Uh, so long castle, uh, king e7, bishop f6. I'm just going to draw arrows instead of moving because uh, the move should happen pretty quickly here. Uh, this is something uh, which Anish has uh, played recently in the Tata Steel. Also, he has big experience in this variation from both sides. Mm. Is something interesting happening anywhere? Yeah, uh, swap for press is absolutely right. Uh, Magnus Carlsen did play this opening against Aryan Tari in Tata Steel and uh, Aryan equalized uh, pretty con convincingly. I, I do think uh, uh, it's a very solid opening. It's really difficult to get some advantage here. Uh, Magnus was trying several times against Wesley, so but uh, not very successful. Um, Max Damien asks why nobody plays bishop g5 versus this line so I think uh, we did see uh, bishop g5 uh, 11th move uh, I mean not here but uh, let me uh, which 7 bishop g5 so here bishop g5 uh, happened in the game between Radek Wojtaszek uh, against uh, was it uh, Jordan? Yeah, it was against Jordan Van Forest from uh, Tata Steel. So we do have uh, 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 cameras of uh, Anish, uh, but we need uh, we need to see uh, how fast they are going to make. Uh, uh, they are going to finish this game. Uh, it's always uh, great fun. Uh, somehow I, uh, I I feel that Bishop G five uh, seventh move should be checked because this this whole thing uh, seems pretty dry and uh, hard to find any advantage for for White uh, here. And uh, nowadays any opening which has been checked again and again it is extremely difficult uh, to uh, to come up with something with all the advancement of technology. Uh, it's difficult so it's better to opt for some uh, surprise uh, weapons rather than just uh, trying to 
go deeper and find some advantage. Uh, players does uh, disclose their seconds because uh, players uh, are accompanied by seconds to various events. So at some point uh, you would see them meeting, uh, walking outside or somewhere also. It's not a big secret uh, regarding the seconds of the players. Um, so here uh, Daniel is thinking whether to go knight g5 or knight to d6. Also, there is a move like uh, rook to d4. Uh, the idea being after f takes e4, okay, knight g5, of course, is uh, much, uh, uh, much more uh, simple. Uh, so king e7. Is this exactly the game uh, between uh, Magnus Carlsen versus Aryan Tari? I somehow feel... Uh, Yeah, it's still following. Uh, thank you, Swap for Press, uh, for helping out. Yeah, we are still following uh, Carlson Tari. That's uh, really nice, nice information. A3 and uh, Bishop, uh, Bishop to A5. Is it Bishop A5 here? I think it's a little bit boring. Uh, nothing much is happening. So let's uh, let's uh, jump quickly to Magnus Carlsen if something is happening here um, well I thought uh, it would be some interesting game but uh, it would it seems to me that it is going to be a long game not sure that if it will end in a draw quickly however I do like uh, I want to see this position it's crazy so this is uh, a very um, uh, this is a variation if uh, white knows what he is doing he is going to be better but uh, quite risky and uh, it definitely fits uh, Chakriya's uh, uh, way of playing so he went for it and uh, here we have it so of course after c takes d5 f takes e4 Bishop takes e4, c takes d5, and uh, black seems to be doing quite okay after bishop a6. And of course, uh, you might think that uh, white can play d6, but here uh, queen b6, uh, king h1. Actually, uh, it, it is possible to play bishop d6, e takes d6, queen b6, king h1, and e takes d3, and black is, uh, black is actually better here. Um, so... Of course, uh, uh, white has two main moves here, uh, knight to f2 or uh, e takes f6, this is an Um Piru versus Raja uh, looks double-edged. Okay, let's let's check uh, quickly. Um, well, this is uh, King's Indian, the main uh, King's Indian defense and uh, of course uh, extremely complicated and uh, very hard opening to play from both uh, both uh, sides and we have some kind of main uh, stuff Timur Rajabov is like uh, an expert in this king, uh, this kind of positions he has uh, beaten number of strong players with uh, amazing amazing uh, games but uh, he changed uh, his uh, reporter to Queen's Gambit uh, for the candidates in either 2011 I think it was 2011 or uh, 13 and uh, since then he has been playing Queen's Gambit declined but of course uh, he he's a great expert in uh, King's Indian defense so this is all pretty standard most so what is happening is white is going uh, trying to open the queen side uh, by getting knight b5, bishop a3, rook c1, and some kind of knight c7, knight e6. So black really can't keep uh, uh, stop the expansion of uh, white's forces here. So what to do? So we need to counter attack on uh, white's king. This is a very important uh, important thing in chess. And uh, of course he is going to play knight f6, h5, g4, and uh, just try to attack on. Uh, on the white king. 
Um, so after King H1, uh, I, I expect uh, H5 uh, to to uh, to prepare playing uh, G4. That's what will happen. But uh, yeah, it's still too early, and I see that uh, Timur is still in his preparation, and uh, Ali Reza is um, has spent already six minutes. It it says something. Uh, uh, what's my favorite line versus the king's union i think g3 uh g3 is the safest if you are uh, just starting because uh, that's not so complicated and uh, it's easy uh easy to play uh i don't think this is still a theory because usually white's bishop is already on f2 and uh, here i do not see it and knight is nice a knight is, knight is better on d7 than on f6 um so i don't play king's indian from black side i used to play when i was a kid but uh, back then the theory was not uh, that much developed um so we we will uh, keep an eye on this if something happens and i expect something crazy to happen so uh, we will take a look at it later on yeah there we have the cameras of uh, ali reza and uh, timur sipping uh, tea uh, his uh, trademark T. Um, so let me. Uh, I I see that uh, Timur is uh, quite relaxed and uh, confident about uh, his position. Of course, it doesn't mean that he's uh, better or something, but uh, from the camera, I can see that he's he's happy. So let's. Uh, uh, okay, nothing much happened here. I don't think it's it's uh, we need to wait uh, a while if something happens um, Not that much uh, Happening in uh, Magnus Carlsen Karyakin's game So pretty standard uh, we have a normal Queen's Gambit decline position and uh, Yeah, we, we we will probably see something like uh, bishop f3 bishop takes f3 and uh, okay wait uh, how do we defend this pawn on d5 what just happened i see something went wrong yeah this is a bit weird he could have played uh bishop ah, okay he could not he, he didn't like bishop h5 because of queen f5 uh bishop g6 perhaps queen e5 and uh, white might get some nice outpost uh, on d4 at some point uh so he went for knight e6 and now queen a4 so if bishop h bishop h5 uh white actually can capture uh a7 yeah we we uh we have to see how this game will continue um uh, but uh forest versus uh, when forest versus oh wow okay that is still champion versus wesley so and uh what do we have here bishop b5 this is uh i have never seen this move i have never seen this move to be honest wow just wow and uh, usual move is uh, knight takes e6, b takes e6, and uh, it's 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 a uh, lot of theory here. Of course, bishop b5, bishop c, uh, bishop b5, bishop c5, knight b3, bishop b6, knight c3, d6. Um, usually we reach uh, such a position with the bishop not on uh, b5 but on d3. Um, but here we have uh, bishop g4, queen d3. A very strange things happened in this game. Uh, I'm quickly uh, jump to the final position which we have. Uh, so we have uh, this position here, knight e4. So black needs to move the queen from f6. And uh, where is he going? Okay, queen g7, we have it knight f3 just splits out of course bishop e5 is coming next and uh, i think uh, bishop f5 should be uh, the move here after something like bishop e5 he can go queen g6 uh, attacking the e4 knight 
and uh, rook a8 i think black is uh, black is doing well here uh we don't have any more moves just knight f3 Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, swap for press asked a very good question. How do we choose queen e7 or queen g7? Uh, so queen uh, g7. So when you have two options or more, first you start uh, thinking what happens uh, for either of them. So queen e7, for example, you play. Uh, he would go knight to uh, f3, I guess. And... Uh, then bishop to f5 because bishop is hanging and uh, here uh, actually uh, your question is right and now i start to think why not queen e7 uh, maybe queen e7 is indeed better here better move here or are we missing something here are we missing something after queen e7 um I don't think so actually. So knight f3 and just bishop f5. Uh, so the point is after knight takes e5, uh, black has this uh, move knight g3. And uh, if white captures queen takes g3, bishop e4 is possible. And uh, if h takes g3, black simply captures on e5. So I do believe queen e7 was possible, but uh, I guess uh, Wesley wanted to keep the queen near the king i think that's the only reason uh, he went for queen g7 and uh, yeah both are possible in my opinion knight f3 bishop f uh, no we don't have bishop f5 uh, we have bishop e6 on board uh, bishop why not bishop f5 it's puzzling uh, to me that he didn't okay so he probably will go queen c4 and uh, try to take the e6 c6 pawn so he went bishop e6 controlling c4 square and probably uh, aiming to get bishop to d5 or f5 f4 and uh, black ca white captured bishop e5 and then uh, f6 uh, so now uh, black can bring his knight to f4 so where does this queen go actually where does this queen go I don't see if bishop c3 I uh, black goes knight f4 the only square I can uh, I can see is queen to d2 and maybe it's not so bad because uh, it, uh, it stops uh, knight e2 check and after bishop c4 uh, it can still fight with uh, rook f1 so we uh, we need to wait and uh, i see only half of uh, wesley so uh, and uh, i don't see the play i see the players cameras but i i can't see their face so it's hard to say uh, who is uh, what they are feeling mm, we'll keep an eye on this um, meanwhile a uh, few things happened in the game between magnus carlson and sergey karyakin Bishop f3 was uh, necessary as um, uh, he didn't expect uh, queen a4, I think. Bishop takes f3 and now queen c5. This is a very important move, nicely supporting the pawn on d5 as well as uh, pawn on a7. And uh, after queen c5, b4, uh, queen c4 uh, here. Um, de just defending the pawn on d5. Uh, queen a7, queen e4 wow i'm not sure uh karyakin is uh is confident here at all uh what what happens if i just take the pawn this this is always the first question that should come to your mind because uh, taking uh capturing the pawn is a very important uh thing here and uh, if d takes uh, e3, uh, I, I wanted to take on uh, e3 with the pawn. And uh, of course, bishop d5 next, it should be pretty good. But uh, we could mi we mi might be missing something here after d4. I did not like uh, e takes d4 that much uh, as uh, black can capture the 
uh, on with uh, knight and uh, after a move like bishop b7 let's say uh, he can play rook c7 and uh, you know it's uh, not sure about this and this knight is nicely placed and queen b4 next um, so it's not a great uh, great idea uh, to capture the pawn on b7 so uh, now actually uh, but of course here queen b7 i expect queen b7 what do you guys think queen b7 is coming or uh, you like uh, e takes d4 uh why he didn't play bishop h5 if queen a7 then rook c2 okay so let's go back there is a su suggestion from max demian he says uh, bishop h5 was his idea so the point being after queen uh, a7 he wanted to uh, play rook c2 attacking the bishop on e2 and uh, attacking the pawn on uh, b2 and uh, i'm actually not sure uh, if uh, white would capture the pawn on uh, uh, queen b7 queen uh, sorry when queen b7 yeah queen b7 okay okay i, I asked the question I, I i got it i got it um so yeah here uh things this is actually a very good suggestion by max demian um i i guess uh, bishop h5 is something which uh, i would definitely consider here because once uh, black manages to get a6 and uh, it's not that simple so we have carlson uh Karyakin's cameras uh let's see e takes d4 has been played uh that's something uh, okay so bishop f3 a good suggestion by max demian uh, so not queen b7 but e takes d4 and uh, what do we have knight takes d4 yeah i i also thought that queen b7 uh, uh, was simpler because uh, okay queen b7 d3 mm, uh, yes yes the pawn is uh, quite advanced but uh, yeah maybe d3 is something which uh, carlson did not like yeah uh, e takes d4 knight takes d4 after bishop b7 i thought rook c7 is uh, fine here so i would like to show a small trick after bishop a6 i give you a few minutes or let's say some seconds to think uh, how would you play after bishop a6 here Yeah, queen f1 and uh, after king f1 just rook a7 is uh, just winning. Um, so I think rook c oh, do we have this on the board. Excellent. So we have this on the board, rook c7. So far we came. And uh, I think queen a5 is the move here. So after rook b7, queen d8 is uh, check. So did did Karyakin miss this move or maybe rook c d7 or yeah rook c d7 with the idea of knight e2 check and uh, rook d1 but then uh, white can simply uh, move the king away from this check so not sure if that helps not sure at all Do you guys want to see the eval bar? I can turn it on. <laughs> if you prefer that way. King h1, yes. Uh, after rook c d7, yeah, king h1, yes. You prefer without, okay. okay that's uh, that's fine by me uh, of course uh... 
well if you guys prefer uh, without i will not uh, i will not use it i mean it's it's uh, uh i prefer without too i have a question uh do you like uh, i i came up with one idea for my uh stream uh it's like kind of motto i want your opinion on this i really want please uh, do tell me how do you like the idea of uh, having the motto of chess cafe uh, or coffee and chat how, how does it sound really uh i know some of you might be tea fans but uh, do you like it do you like this uh, motto of which i feel so yeah, we have rook cd7 and king h1 is probably coming next. He must, uh, he must uh, move. But if you have, uh, no, uh, no, my channel is uh, GM Hare Krishna, but uh, I would like to have some kind of cool three word uh, rhyming stuff. So if you can suggest, I can, uh, I can use it. But uh, I, I felt that probably uh, a theme could be like chess, coffee and uh, chat or actually chess cafe chat is also good. Yeah, chess coffee chat. And repeat. So it's like we uh, we watch chess with uh, drinking coffee and then we chat. So that's how uh, I came up with this. So Bishop A6 has been played. Coffee chess. Okay. <laughs> Yes, eBay, I did not know that. Okay, I, uh, no, I'm not going to change the name of the channel, of course, uh, but uh, I want to have, uh, you know, some kind of a theme uh, for the channel. So that's why I was wondering if uh, we can have some theme. If you, if you guys uh, can come up with something, please do let me know. And uh, yeah, we can figure it out. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Uh, I know some people prefer tea, some people uh, prefer soft drinks and uh, so on. So, um, yeah, uh, please uh, do write in chat with some uh, interesting options to, so that we can use it. And uh, do follow the channel uh, so uh, we can have more fun, more interaction with uh, other members. I think this is completely uh, lost for Karyakin from the cameras. I can see clearly that uh, Carlson uh, feels uh, very good. And who doesn't? I, uh, just two pawns, uh, Bishop. Of course, uh, Black does have uh, uh, Knight on d4. Uh, the only trick which uh, one should not fall is some kind of Knight, d, knight f3, Rook d5, Rook h5, Rook h3. But this is, uh, this is far. Uh, even rook a6 is not a threat because of queen takes uh, uh, d8. Uh, sorry, what is uh, what is pog? A realistic guy says pog. Yeah, cameras are the new evil bars. Uh, but uh, you, uh, one has to understand when we are play, when we play over the board, we can actually see the players. So that is, uh... aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, please, uh, please uh, teach me these uh, emotes and so on. So I, uh, I, I would like. Uh, uh, okay. I, I like all this colorful stuff uh, which I am seeing on Twitch. Right, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Chin. We, uh, we, I, I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, we will uh, post the uh, uh, clips or uh, stream on YouTube. Uh, for now, uh, I, uh, I'm doing on Twitch, but uh, we will see. We will see. Uh, at BBTV. Okay, so we have uh, BTTV. Okay, so we are having nice uh, suggestions by uh, uh, various chat here. Uh, definitely, we uh, 
my producer will uh, take note of all all this and uh, i'm i'm not uh, uh, i'm not liking uh, what karyakin is doing here i think this is just uh, okay so we will get the all the emotes so you uh, all of you like uh, the emotes in fact i also like uh, i just don't know how to have them i i want to see i want to see all these emotes and i will push my producer to somehow get it okay my producer says he noted so great 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 suggestions and uh, i need more suggestions to make our channel uh you know look even better and uh also uh, uh, uh yes uh, that is I, I don't know uh actually actually which is better which is not um, but I just started with uh, Twitch, so we will see. Of course, I uh, I got a lot of requests uh, regarding the U uh, YouTube opening a YouTube channel, which I have actually. Uh, perhaps uh, I I can uh, uh, post it somewhere. But uh, okay, uh, we will see. Uh, keep thinking of Knight C six, but just runs into Rook D six. Okay, so swap for phrase says he was thinking about knight c6 so that he can capture. So his point is after knight takes c6, b takes c6, rook d1, but uh, simply after knight c6, white can take on rook uh, d6. Yeah, but uh, knight b3 uh, also rook, uh, you can take rook d6, but uh, of course you can also capture queen to queen d8. And uh, may I ask, uh, any of you are uh, like, uh, pro uh, like not professional, but uh, any of you have a rating um, like USCF or uh, um, PDA rating? Okay, let's see. Uh, I, I. I think uh, Ali Reza won against uh, Rad Timur in a nice way with Rook G1. Uh, very, um, uh, very nicely here. Uh, Rook G1, Knight F6, Knight F2. It's all about stopping this pawn, and also White is trying to get G4 to open this file. We have seen something similar between uh, Jordan Van Forest against uh, Jan Nepomniachtchi. Knight h5, g3, and uh, king g2 because he needs to uh, move this. Yeah, this is uh, this is not good for uh, uh, what what has happened in the game because if black doesn't get his usual attack, white is just gonna roll over uh, queen side, and that's exactly what happened in just couple of moves from here. Um, so. Okay, so uh, if uh, if all of you uh, have rating, I would like to see. Uh, I mean, I, I, you can post uh, your ratings and when you started and things like that. Um, so, how does Sergey manage being Timur's second and being a top player himself? Uh, it's actually a very good question. A couple of uh, years ago, um, it was considered like once you are a second. Uh, you kind of, uh, you know, finished your career and things like that. But uh, yeah, today it's uh, no longer that way. Um, many, many strong players work as seconds. For example, Maxim Vashilagra was second of uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, for the previous match. And now he has a chance of qua uh, 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 qua qualifying uh, for the match. Uh, winning the candidates and getting... Uh, uh, to play the match and here Anish might uh, have some chance okay of course knight uh, a7 is the threat here as uh, bishop is pinned um, oh Maximin has 2300 and uh, 1900 that's good that's good 1500 uh-huh uh, call the site Hari Chesna
so whenever uh, whenever uh, someone says pog it means uh, excellent uh, in the, in the in the terms of uh, twitch uh, is that correct okay nice nice to know so all right so uh we uh this this is going to be a draw i mean uh, wild things happened but of course uh, as i explained uh, yesterday uh, with the pawn on h6 and bishop on h2 and uh, king uh, white just needs to bring the king to h1 but also of course after knight a7 um yeah i, I mean anything is uh, just to draw a5 uh, just bring the king uh, so this is going to be a draw uh, hikaru won against levon uh, so somebody guessed it would be a draw but uh, no he, hikaru uh, managed to win against levon so that's uh, excellent um, uh, excellent score we we will have uh, standings after all the games are over uh, Maxim beat uh, Alan. I don't know. I mean, it was a crazy game, I suppose. Um, and uh, which games are uh, happening uh, for now? Uh, I see uh, Jan is winning against uh, Anton. So we'll just stay with uh, Magnus Carlsen against Sergei Karyakin. And uh, wow. Uh, what just happened? but uh, uh i don't know what happens after rook d6 knight takes c3 uh, rook d8 king g7 and a5 uh naka uh, doesn't press uh that much i mean naka plays solid with black but with white he is extremely dangerous um this is my second stream uh, for the commentary but uh, uh third stream uh, i had uh, my first stream uh, with uh, david navara my good friend and uh, we played hand and brain against uh, uh, just 24 premium members I think the move is a6 here, people. Did you guys see here? So a6, queen d8, a7, and uh, what a nice way to finish. If uh, black cannot stop the pawn because the knight is far away and uh, black has no way of uh, attacking both f1 and a5 here. Yeah, a6 is really nice. That's a real pog. And we see the cameras here. Uh, so he did not take, of course, because it's just lost. Knight b5, uh, rook fd1. Uh, I don't think uh, this will go for a very long time. Um, yeah, indeed. I I hope, uh, Max Demius, uh, you, you get chance to play uh, over the board events and, uh, you know, uh, get knobs. Yes, indeed, David Navara, the nicest GM. Uh, you can check out the clip uh, from my uh, channel where uh, David's da uh, dance clip. Uh, you should definitely, you guys should check it out if you haven't seen. So it will take some time, but uh, it's totally winning here. Rook to d7, bishop to d5, rook f7 uh, should happen anytime. And also, you know, if, if I want to be really, really safe, g3, king g2, and there is no way uh, white can, uh, you know, get under some kind of perpetual. We do have some moves, h5, king g1, h4, rook to d7, queen c2, so queen c2 is still fighting uh, not to give uh, forced wins. So when you, uh, you are losing, at least try to, uh, you know, it's not important to fight longer, but it's important to uh, not give obvious moves when you are defending. 
so queen c3 rook d1 and just a7 and uh, curry can resign so where uh, nice victory by uh, magnus carlson he won his game against uh, sergey karyakin and uh, if anish draws the game so we are having uh, uh, two players on the first place in the first place right uh, my next uh, over the board event uh, to be honest i do not know but uh, i hope uh, the the world uh, the world cup perhaps i am not sure actually i'm not sure uh, yes, uh, Max Damien, I am working uh, on my next uh, chessable courses. Um, uh, it will be about uh, end games. Uh, it's still not, uh, it's a secret. <laughs> it will be about end games, yeah. I hope that's, uh, that's, that, that will be good. And uh, yeah, we will see. I, I'm really excited. And uh, Shahriyar won. Uh, so did we finish all the games no we have one game going on let's stay with that jordan van forest we haven't seen the game for a while i think so we had um we left here actually bishop e5 f6 and knight to g3 f takes e5 and knight h5 he missed queen f7 uh threatening queen h5 and uh, bishop c4 uh, winning the exchange so is it possible that he missed it or uh, uh, or Jordan didn't have anything better? I don't know. Knight g3, uh, bishop c4. Let's go, go to the position where they are because a uh, lot of moves and they are playing in seconds. I don't want to miss this action if... Um, um, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I think uh, um, I think the the point is when you when you uh, get to play uh, strong events, obviously you in, uh, improve your strength uh, as you are playing against strong players. And uh, of course, that doesn't mean when you don't get okay. Uh, uh, Wesley is just winning here after uh, Rook F three. Uh, when you don't get the chance, you should still be working on chess and uh, wait for the opportunity. And uh, we cannot uh, blame on um, not getting uh, tournaments. You know, it's uh, many uh, young talents, many uh, strong players are there. So we sh everybody should get a chance. uh queen takes c5 yeah th this is just lost uh, i think uh uh just couple of moves and uh jordan should resign yeah king g g g1 rook g4 e exactly and now uh well you can just take rook uh rook g3 and also you can win but of course uh you can just stay with the rook on g7 and there is no check uh it's just a simple win yeah, of course, ratings uh, will not go down uh, if you are not playing uh, unlike in uh, tennis. So, uh, yeah, it's not. So we are waiting. And uh, yeah, I would like to hear more uh, suggestions uh, on uh, what can be added uh, and uh, uh, I, I was thinking some kind of polls uh, if you would like to have uh, for the games and uh, we are going to have uh, uh, yeah that would be funny but uh, mostly funny for uh, white <laughs> the line which uh, swap for press mentioned uh, sure we will have less uh, yeah we can finally we can see uh, Jordan's face I mean cameras yes but uh, uh, we hardly could see uh, his face uh, but he is trying to queen the pawn, and why? Why is Wesley playing so fast? Why? Now, uh, I mean, of course, queen f five is not a threat, or queen e oh, but wait, queen e four, queen e four, and rook g eight, knight f six. Oh no, queen e four is coming. What? What is this? This is. 
of course this is winning but uh, why should I do this actually uh, you know I, I just want to point uh, one funny draw so let's say we go like uh, like this uh, I need the queen uh, on f1 check so let me do this way so queen g2 guys uh, when you are completely lost you can try such tricks <laughs> so of course it's not going to happen uh, so we are still uh, in the position queen uh, c takes p3 c takes p3 uh, so we are seeing some discussion on this Well, uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, my layout is uh, just just twenty four, of course. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Max Damian. I I like. Uh, I I also want to know how does uh, the color of uh, the layout overlay looks like because I like uh, blue color, you know. So that's why I. Uh, uh, we have this setup and uh, let's see what, what's happening here. So we have we don't have queen e4 but we have queen to e1, b2 and queen b1 check, rook g6, queen e1, b1, a8. Wow, four queens on the board. <laughs> Thank you, mathematical. Thank you. It's uh, the credit goes to the, uh, I mean, we, we got, uh, got the graphics from uh, chess 24 uh, graphics and which uh, upon uh, my producer uh, changed it so it's his job um, actually both so we should give uh, credit to both um, and uh, uh, how often do we see this kind of uh, checkmate here <laughs> as we can see and uh, Jordan did not allow Wesley so to uh, give a checkmate and uh, I do not blame him for that, but I will. I am going to uh, make it here, so I enjoy this. Um, so, do we have uh, the standings for the next game? I think all the games are over uh, for now. Um, so Wesley won a game, and uh, I want. I am curious to see how the standings look like. Four queens, Pog. Okay, I I I need to learn uh, new language. Yeah, we uh, super gems usually don't play uh, that many open events. Uh, so of course, uh, still there are some events which uh, they play. Yeah, emote language is good. I I have to study. I have to study. Yeah, I I uh, it, yes, it is totally new for me, but uh, it's quite interesting. So I I, I when I saw all these colorful uh, emotes, it I really like it. So it's interesting. Uh, yeah, we have okay. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, I am a little bit. Uh... Parallel universe, yes. <laughs> but I really like this pog. I will use that. I will use that in chat. Yeah, this is uh, something which I wanted to discuss. Like even if you are, uh, if you uh, like right now, we have nine rounds and uh, minus one is currently in eighth place. But uh, that shows how uh, close it is, in fact, because... Uh, and we didn't have that many draws uh, so far and uh, a lot of fighting games and what is happening is a uh, lot of victories uh, by uh, lower section uh, today I think as I can see uh, clearly uh, Alireza moved to plus one which is five points 
uh, five points and uh, Levon had a terrible day I think uh, he was uh, he was in second place he just scored half a point from four games that is the that is some something uh, you know which is which can happen in uh, in uh, rapid games and uh, tomorrow he can just come back and win uh, uh, many games so uh, I, 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 I am curious to see uh, how the standings look from 9 to 16 because sometimes uh, you can have 8 to 10 uh, uh, 10 place sharing the uh, sharing the eighth place so pog means play of the game okay that's that's good play of the game uh it's not uh, newcomers always suffer uh it's more like uh, uh it takes time uh to adjust to uh, both playing uh, at a such uh, high level event uh, at the same time online and uh, every single round uh, monsters are coming at you because they know that they can smell the blood and they are going to try uh, to win against you so uh, this this puts a lot of pressure on many players who just uh, started playing in the tour but uh, eventually they will get yeah so we have also oh actually it is uh, a tie uh, 8 to 12 uh, places we have four points so very interesting and uh, uh, i don't know i mean only one of them uh, uh, will probably uh, get there but of course uh, uh, we uh, don't have like we we see that the points are not like two points more or something uh, between seventh and eighth uh yeah five players on uh, four points out of nine really uh yeah chess pop can be used to exclaim a great move i guess okay yeah so uh, newcomers uh, it's new experience it will take some time first to play five games with the cameras with uh, the whole thing then uh, you know thousands of people watching and you have a lot of expectations you know a lot of things uh, go inside the player's head and i'm sure uh, it's not just about you prepare and play uh, your game and that is the reason why uh, the top level in events are really hard and uh, you get to uh, improve your chest strength and become the best uh, so we'll take a short break and uh, we'll be back soon and uh, i want to uh, ask you some more of uh, suggestions and uh, the emote language but uh, um, yeah we'll be soon uh, discussing about them and let me see who uh, which games uh, are in, uh, interesting so i can ask some predictions uh, Rajabha versus Carlson. So I want the prediction for this game and uh, Daniel Dubo versus Hikaru Nakamura. So these are the games I want the predictions. So we'll be back uh, in a while. Hi, uh, welcome back. And uh, yeah, like I asked, uh, so I see some of the chat. Uh, Carlson, Raja draw, uh, Nakamura beats Dubo. Okay. Nakamura beats Dubov. Yeah, that uh, that is uh, interesting. I think uh, it's quite possible. But on the other hand, as I see the standings, Hikaru is on uh, plus three, and uh, I think uh, plus three is very safe uh, to be in top eight. And uh, yeah, I also think Timur uh, Timur uh, versus Magnus will be uh, maybe not quick draw, but it's quite likely uh yeah uh yes uh yeah he has uh global feline support definitely he's really useful but i also have <laughs> feline support <laughs> although it's uh, at the moment uh in discrete mode and so we will get uh our support uh so yeah, I see some uh, chat. Bef uh, since we have some time, uh, we can uh, talk a little bit. Uh, if you have some questions for me, do let me know. Uh, we have some time for... Or, or did I make some mistake? I think uh, I made the mistake. So we have the games. Okay, so 
yes as you all guessed i think uh, this will be a quick draw and uh, okay so maxim versus so wesley which uh, should also end in a draw not uh, not going to be pretty interesting um so what is this are we going to see a moscow here i had uh, i had such a game uh, against uh, timur but not uh, bishop bishop e7 wow that is uh, that is surprising um, i mean he could have just went for c5 structures of course yeah this is uh, quite uh, common to uh, nowadays uh, many top players did make courses on chessable and uh, they are playing from the other side of the uh, recommended course and they are winning so <laughs> when you when you study the course uh, you not only must study the course but also check <laughs> on your own so that's how it okay uh, chat you are absolutely um, uh, I don't know who predicted that uh, Hikaru will push, but uh, the game ended in draw in just 22 moves. So Hikaru uh, he stays on plus 3 and he's quite safe and uh, I expect him to be in top 8. Uh, and he's pretty good at uh, maintaining once he reaches uh, plus score. So we can stay with uh, Timo Rajabo versus Magnus Carlsen. I think... I think uh, Magnus is uh, trying to keep some chances, but honestly, I am uh, I'm not sure uh, what's happening here. Yeah, why is it surprising that Dubu and Hikaru? Uh, that is actually a, a known uh, drawing variation. Um, so for those of you, uh, you can just put. Uh, the, the same position and you can search you will get the games uh, in online database or somewhere so that's a known uh... yeah last uh, the, the last round of the day you should always predict a, a draw for Hikaru I think that's uh, just my observation and especially if he is playing black uh, he's uh, he's gonna just he's fine with the draw and uh, guys those of you who uh, who are still not sub uh, following the channel please do uh, follow the channel and uh, help me grow the channel so uh, are you guys still staying with uh, magnus carlson uh, uh, win or draw or uh, you guys want to change your mind i i think uh, uh, white's position is quite safe here um nothing to worry if he gets b4 uh rook b1 and get nice uh, control over the c5 square here draw okay uh okay so it's they are still uh you're still hoping that it would end in a draw okay so you're going all in swap for press okay so magnus win i am not sure i would take that here actually I, I also think it will end in a draw. I, I think it will end in a draw. Uh, do we have any other interesting games? Um, okay, we can take a look at uh, Wesley So versus Maxim. If uh, something happens, we can return. Uh, to me, this also, uh, this position seem pretty... Um, Troyish actually, uh, so white, uh, black can go queen a5 check, queen c5, or uh, even rook takes c5, and after white castles, uh, white makes short castle, just knight g3, h takes g3, it's totally fine. Um, so I don't know, um, do we have any moves? Uh, we don't have any, any moves so far. Uh, I, uh, what do you think? Uh, Nepo Grandelius looks interesting. All right, let's let's see. Let's see. Uh, what? Okay, so Adiban has a nice uh, promotion with uh, Nepo's game, I think. So I don't know uh, what he has recommended in his course. But I do believe that knight 
h3 is the move uh, to get e3 knight f4 and then h4 but okay uh, he wants to play h4 the idea being g4 uh, and h5 so f6 d4 e6 e3 bishop d6 i will try not to make sense of uh, all these moves but uh, yeah white is just trying to develop and uh, castle so we have all these kind of moves here mm, so who is better here i i am not sure but uh, i do know that black is uh, aiming to get someday e5 and perhaps a6 e5 because if you go directly c5 knight b5 can be a problem uh rajabha win and uh, of course uh, here uh, we can see um why it is not really trying to play f4 g5 because uh, knight can jump to f5 on g3 uh, so this knight c1 move um, just probably uh, developing the bishop and uh, i like black's position it's not that black is doing better or something uh, but uh, of course Yan is very tricky uh, we will see how it goes maybe knight a4 keeping pressure on e5 this this will be interesting so let's go back uh, uh, go back to rajab of uh, uh, magnus carlson's game and uh, um yeah i think uh, tadavi one is right um i'm not sure if you will push for uh, the draw but perhaps uh, what you meant is just he will play solid and then uh, if he stays uh, uh, if he stays uh, in equal or plus he's uh, almost certain to qualify yeah exactly it's very uh, easy to play here uh, just knight takes c5 knight takes c5 d takes c5 bishop c5 um, of course we have bishop f6 which is also fine i guess uh, bishop takes f6 is most likely do we have the move so knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d takes e5 and bishop f3. So g takes f3, um, I don't know, I, I don't want to predict this but uh, I'm afraid it is going to be something like this eventually. I think bishop f6, what do you guys think? Yeah, once bishop f6 is has been played, yeah, it's... Uh, uh still we don't have the move we we we, we are waiting for the move but uh, see knight f6 really the, uh yeah we have bishop f6 knight f6 doesn't really uh help as uh, just white takes uh bishop c5 d takes c5 and uh, white is healthy pawn up here and we have some moves quickly here let's see what happened knight c5 takes takes so I think we are going to reach uh, the position which I mentioned uh, before. So either bishop f3, g takes f3 or uh, just bishop b2. So we are going to see that I think. Uh, I see uh, the camps of uh, both Rajabo and Carlson. Can you guys uh, understand the like who's better or something i i would like to hear uh, uh what you feel uh about the players and to understand uh, uh by feelings let's let's try to guess who do you think is feeling comfortable or confident from what i understand uh magnus has seen uh the yeah that's that's uh, my guess as well but uh, on the other hand the draw should be justified uh meaning that uh, it should uh, you know happen as i, I as i told <laughs> so it should be bishop f3 i think yeah exactly i i it is possible that magnus is looking for more but uh, how do i get this pawn back without capturing uh without exchanging a lot of pieces this is uh the main uh, problem here um so you would like to go uh, rook to c8 here maybe but then a takes b4 a takes b4 
a simple move I, I i don't want to think too much but let's say even a move like this it's extremely difficult to uh, win this but of course i am going to you know start with uh, rook c1 or rook fd1 i don't uh, uh, i'm not sure but okay also uh, black is not really risking anything here uh, as such uh, it's just if uh, magnus want to sit and play for a while or not uh uh oh welcome hashtag chess uh so hashtag chess uh, uh how was how was your stream no i i think rajabov uh, is uh thinking which tea to drink he likes tea in uh, i have and he's act, uh, he's a good friend of mine and a uh, very nice person <laughs> sorry i don't want to become famous i am already famous <laughs> cool cool uh it's great to have you in the chat uh hashtag chess uh so um yeah we are seeing uh rajabo versus magnus carlson and uh we have the cameras but somehow we see aliris a little bit it's it's actually quite funny uh it's oh okay i uh i don't know why he's laughing why, why is he laughing yeah uh did we finish the game or uh, what's happening uh i actually don't know uh, it, maybe it's possible that he would like to go a4 b3 and just to fix the pawn on b2 yeah i don't know i am a little bit surprised uh, he is still thinking uh, and uh, we will we will come back uh, so meanwhile um, this is a pretty solid draw by wesley so and maxim um, we uh, is there any other interesting games do we have some moves here yeah, it seems like it's some kind of tea break. What's this? I don't understand. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to Anish Kiri Mamet Yarov. Uh, I want to just check uh, briefly. Uh, yeah, okay. So Shakriar is sticking to this variation which we he played early on. I am not a big fan of this variation, but my friend David Navara uh, likes this and he's pretty good at it. And uh, we'll have him uh, uh, in the commentary pretty soon. And uh, this is all pretty much known stuff. Uh, yeah not not important to go too much into theory here uh so i like such positions for white uh simply it's easier to play so you just go knight g3 knight h5 and uh, some queen e1 queen g3 and just throw all your pieces uh, at black's king that's all you need to do coffee break yeah uh yeah jesse when uh, you were not here uh we were discussing uh what could be the theme of uh, my channel so uh, i i thought uh, co uh, chess coffee and chat and uh, some of them actually liked it and uh, what do you think so anyway knight a5 rook b1 uh, if i was white i would have freely gone for knight g3 and uh, just knight h5 just to throw everything rook b1 
knight c4 takes takes queen d3 so he's defending the pawn on e3 and taking the pawn on d4 bishop e6 knight b4 knight a3 rook b4 so how this knight is coming back uh probably by playing a5 but a5 uh white has uh the move rook a4 hmm this is interesting be uh by playing rook b4 white is threatening to capture uh the knight on uh, a3 and after a move like uh, queen a5 i think queen a5 uh should be on the board uh this soon um white has this nice move bishop d6 and then playing e5 knight to e6 and uh, this knight uh, is not going to see daylight Thank you, Jesse. Uh, okay, so we have some other name also. Hari Chesna. Why is the why is uh, uh, na important at the end? Uh, okay, so Carlson decided to play for some time. Yes, uh, exactly. We uh, discussed rook uh, rook c8. Uh, we thought. Uh, White would go for rook a c. I mean, just take a b4 and rook c1. But uh, Timur went for rook f c1, bishop e7. Uh, we are going to see a takes b4, a takes b4. So this is always uh, an eternal question to exchange these pawns or just to keep the pressure. Mm, at the moment, I think it's uh, safe to say we can take it. A takes b4 and uh, something like bishop a6 should uh, should be fine for White but we have some moves so uh, white went for bishop to a6 so bishop a6 uh, if black wants to uh, finish the game he can just take bishop f3 queen f3 and rook c5 however uh, if he wants to continue he must take bishop a6 queen takes a6 honestly i don't think it's a good idea to continue this uh, there is uh, not much of it uh, chance for uh, white to get uh, black to get anything um yeah i think uh, uh, i i feel that magnus uh, did have some issues yeah we see bishop f3 yeah i think uh, that's enough and uh, before his internet uh, or i don't know what other problems he had uh, rook c5 uh, actually uh, white maybe can play a little bit but yeah i don't think so it should end in pretty quick um well uh the fact that anand uh, won so many events and uh crossed all the barriers which uh, uh which was felt like impossible and uh that that is uh, already a big thing for uh, all the Indian chess players. Um, oh, okay. So uh, is uh, Na is uh, some some uh, uh, once again a Twitch uh, Twitch uh, language like North America. Actually, uh, there was a funny story. Uh, a lady uh, wanted to adopt me uh, when I visited USA. Very, uh, um, I mean, uh, friendly people, um, uh, Indians uh, in USA. I visited uh, for several events and uh, yes, yeah, she asked me if she can adopt me. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, favorite chess book. I have many. It's hard to uh, say just one, but uh, since I sold a lot of uh, nominations, it's the 2545 book from uh, um, by Kasparian. Um, okay, so nothing much is happening, but why didn't uh, Timur just go rook c1, rook c8? Okay, so b3, bishop c4, and uh, we'll just see some exchanges and uh, uh, 
uh well i said uh, thank you but uh, you know i i would like to uh you know my mother is waiting at home so yeah no she was sweet person but uh, of course yeah okay so we uh why why are they playing up uh, maybe it's some kind of uh repetitions okay so they they are showing to the audience that uh yeah it's it's just true so what do we have what do we have did something uh, crazy happened uh, in the game between uh, anish or okay so here um, we left somewhere uh, at this point and after rook b4 bishop to c4 so um, it's forced to always uh, rook c4 is necessary after queen a3 uh, black can take on uh, d4 and uh, defending this bishop also check uh so rook c4 uh, knight c4 queens take c4 and rook e4 uh at first glance it might appear that uh white is doing extremely well well uh, of course white is pretty safe here but uh black if manages to exchange both these pawns on b5 and c2 he shouldn't be having a uh, big difficulty in holding this so c3 a6 so we have some moves let's uh, quickly go so queen d7 nicely protected and uh, you know the bishop on g3 cannot really attack any of it i would you guys uh, prefer white or black here i see anish fully focused i think he is he knows he's better i i also think uh, white is just a little bit better here Uh, at the moment, knight f5 uh, is not uh, not a threat, but uh, certainly he would like to move this queen away from c4, and then somehow get knight f5 or knight knight f5 and knight g6, knight d6. Uh, is white winning? How is white winning here? I mean, white is definitely better, but uh, I think uh, still we we need to wait for. Um, so here uh, black can play rook uh, a to e6 i'm not sure uh, it was such a good idea to allow this because it can give chance to get uh, rook e rook e3 and uh, you know black's rook uh, rooks will be totally fine here uh, i'm not sure if we'll see that maybe uh, maybe rook a, rook e8 just and then uh, this is also a nice idea but it is very important uh, to exchange this pawn so we see the uh, cameras uh, cams of both the players uh, giri and mamet yarov yeah uh, a lot of work to do uh, certainly uh, i will also take white here uh, it's without any doubt um, but uh, yeah a lot of work here not not easy Yes, uh, we are actually seeing a new Anish Giri uh, since uh, bef before the Tata Steel itself. Um, but uh, he has been uh, playing for win in uh, every game and uh, keeping his chances. Uh, I don't think uh, all those jokes with the safety or uh, draw uh, will uh, will hold any time uh, now because uh, he's just fighting uh, in every game and uh, i think those jokes are uh, it's it's past Yeah, I'm uh, I'm living in the Czech Republic. Yes.
no no the, all those jokes with the draws and so on doesn't exist so we have some moves i just uh, yeah uh what do we have here rook no we don't have rook e6 uh so rook e8 uh rook f5 uh rook g6 queen f3 and rook g5 so uh it's very good to exchange uh um the rooks this way then f6 can uh, white can black can play f6 and kind of create nice uh, fortress here in the sense uh, it would be hard for white to continue his attack and uh, of course that's why um, anish went uh, rook f4 so you see uh, these jokes with uh, draws and all please <laughs> it's it's uh, we must change this uh, b5 uh, bishop to h4 uh and uh here uh we have the option to go uh rook to e5 b5 c5 and g6 and uh it's it's a big choice No, draw, uh, draw, -ish, uh, draw jokes on Anish is uh, not uh, in 2021, I'm afraid. Uh, yes, uh, for me, it is uh, easier uh, to travel and prepare. Uh, my friend, David Navara, he will join us uh, in the next uh, coming days. And also my friends will join on Monday and on Tuesday. Uh, so a lot of guests planned uh, for next uh, coming days and uh, also we um, uh, we are going to discuss a lot of things uh, and uh, yeah I'm looking forward uh, to, uh, to having them on my stream. So here slowly uh, Anish is uh, you know keeping this threat of knight e7 so so that kind of fix this uh, rook on e8 and at some point it can happen that rook d4 uh, so king h7 has been played mm. so what happens if i move the knight let's say knight to Knight to g3, a very strange move. Knight to g3, knight h5. No, I don't like it so much actually. Mm. White has achieved everything he could. And uh, now I uh, we need to find how he could, uh, he can make progress here. If white moves the rook from uh, f4, black would then uh, check uh, white's king. And it is dangerous to keep the king here because at some point uh, the rook, rook will enter the first rank. Bishop f2. Okay, this is nice. So he uh, white is uh, planning to get the bishop to d4, uh, putting pressure on g7. So at some point he will force black to play uh, f6, then get h4 and uh, this rook on g6 uh, will be in uh, in huge trouble i think uh, he's going to win this game he's going to win this uh, i'm sure okay maybe i should not jinx uh, this but i think he will win this Uh, meanwhile, uh, since we have some time here, I just want to uh, see the game between Levon versus Jordan. If Levon loses this game, he uh, he may just half a point from uh, five games, right? Yeah, this is uh, this is really uh, incredible. Like. Uh, yeah, queen b5, queen f5. Uh, yeah, just if he exchanges the queens, it's just lost. So, okay, king h7, queen e4, and rook g6. Uh, otherwise, white would just uh, give perpetual check. And uh, now, uh, if the pawn was on h4, it would be nice. But uh, 
I don't know actually here because all black uh, needs is just some queen b5 queen c6 and uh, it's game over I think we will see the result uh, this one yeah this is what I'm talking about uh, Levon was doing uh, really well he was on plus two uh, at the end of the day one and uh, now we see him uh, losing four games out of five and uh, why it happened I have no idea yeah queen b5 is uh, coming next yeah so let's uh, the, I think uh, Jordan will win this uh, perhaps little it will take maybe a few minutes um what was the game we were looking at i forgot yeah anish versus uh uh Shafir. so queen c7 okay bishop g3 so this is exactly uh uh this is exactly the the problem uh which i was mentioning so whenever bishop moves away from this diagonal uh immediately the queen uh will come to this uh, c7 h2 and then it's kind of uh, an issue queen c6 that is uh, 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 I'm not sure if I like this okay of course queen f3 uh, rook takes f3 knight takes d4 rook c3 knight b5 it it's it's probably uh, going to fizzle out into a draw after let's say rook b3 knight d6 and okay i can go on forever but uh, of course uh, anish played knight to d4 um so uh, the point is after queen takes f3 rook takes f3 uh, c3 pawn is protected and uh, he's threatening to take on f7 so that uh, is uh, missed by uh, Mamed Yarov I think and uh, we are most likely uh, I mean maybe uh, not most likely but we can see something with uh, an exchange of uh, c3b5 uh, but also I'm not sure because um, black can't really uh, get his rook to b8 as uh, White's bishop is nicely um, seeing this diagonal so I don't know I think uh, uh, black is in serious danger so now rook f7 is going to happen after rook f7 I guess he will go b4 c takes b4 bishop uh, rook takes b4 and uh, move like knight f5 is this possible yeah I think knight f5 King g6 maybe knight to d6 so uh, yeah a lot of a uh, lot of a uh, lot of uh, things happening let's see uh, if Anish will take rook f7 or uh, he has something better yeah he needs to hold on to the c3 pawn otherwise uh, if rooks are exchanged uh, it is uh, it's not a theoretical draw you know you can always uh, lose it's not a fortress kind of a draw um, but uh, Shah is going spending a lot of time as well yeah soon we are uh, we are going to um, yeah I don't know why he's thinking for rook f7 Rook F7 looks uh, pretty. Ah, he uh, Rook F5 doesn't make any sense actually. Rook F5 doesn't make any sense. Uh, okay, so Bishop C7, Rook B7, Bishop D6 looks nice here, but uh, on the other hand, I defended. Uh, I mean, F7 pawn is defended and uh, what happens something like rook d6 bishop b4 and i get my rook to d5 now in order to capture this pawn on b5 uh, it will take a lot of effort so we do have uh, rook f7 
and uh, b4 indeed has been played uh, and uh, maybe he is waiting for c4 actually c no c takes b4 rook takes b4 uh so here knight c6 knight e5 i need to get the you know bishop somehow to uh, this a1 h8 diagonal uh, and so he played rook d7 so of course he's threatening knight f5 after rook g8 just bishop e5 Yeah, so if Anish wins this, uh, he scored like uh, four, four and a half or four points. Yeah, knight c6, bishop e5 is one, but also knight f5 could be annoying. So rook b2. Mm -hmm. So Mamidjarov does not want to, you know, uh, stay uh, passive, but he wants to do some kind of rook d2 and rook d2. After a move like knight f5, I think he wanted to, uh, he will play king g6. Knight uh, g7, um, black has uh, rook e e2. But wait, uh, after king g6, maybe just knight h4. Uh, also, there is a move like this or not? No, it's no point. Uh, I think knight h4 should be good king h7 and uh, somehow get the bishop to d4 or c3 but f2 e1 e5 uh, all these squares are protected so i am not sure how he's gonna manage this Yeah, I see that uh, Levon is uh, completely lost. Okay, let's stay here. Uh, we have knight e7 indeed. And king h7 on the board. Uh, I Okay, h4 is nice uh, to get h5 and knight f5. No, uh, if Anish wins, it's four points out of five because I remember the draw against uh, um, against Anton David. Yeah, uh, Mamed Yarov doesn't like uh, passive defense, but uh, on the other hand, when it comes to direct variations, he uh, he he calculates really well and. Uh, what happens after knight d5? I think knight d5 is the move here. Threatening knight f6. Check. King g6 maybe. Yeah, king g6. Not clear at all. Uh, it seems like it's winning. Uh, and there is a nice uh, trick here. I will uh, show you after knight f5, king g6, rook e7, rook e7. And uh, the knight on uh, g7 is trapped. so okay so knight f5 uh, will be met with uh, king g6 so he went for knight d5 uh, with the idea of knight f6 we need uh, emotes and uh, we'll try to get them we'll try uh so knight f6 okay he uh, black must uh, move okay actually he he does he can play rook uh, to e6 when you think you uh you, you got the uh you know you fork the rook actually you can just play rook e7 oh no this doesn't work because of knight e6 but uh, this is possible as after knight e8 just rook d7 but he went for king uh, g8 just simple chess and uh, how do we continue king h3 okay so which means 
he doesn't see a clear win but uh, he just wants to improve h5 knight f4 knight g6 and he knows that uh, shark doesn't really like defend uh, defend this um i think uh, um keeping the pawn on uh, h5 is uh, quite a committal decision but i think it's necessary otherwise uh, how do we uh, stop this move king g6 and uh, of course the ideal setup would be something like g4 um, h5 and bring the bishop to he blundered my goodness he just blundered look at that he just blundered yesterday it was yeah yeah this this is incredible this is uh, the last game of the day and uh, this is just incredible and uh, Anish uh, is fully focused and um, yeah and Mohamed Yaro of course resigned oh this is this is incredible that he just uh, did not see that e2 rook is hanging but uh, this this is not the first time uh, that happened yeah, such a thing happened to Shahriar um, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see if uh, more uh, if yeah, that's really rough. Okay, what's happening between uh, Alan? Okay, but uh, actually, I I thought that uh, Alan was doing fine until some point, but the final position seem he's he's just a piece down, and. Uh, there is a, there is some mating threats here after rook take, rook g3 and bishop f6 so uh, ali reza is going to win here rook b8 check is i think he can just resign no um i don't see any any way he can uh, defend this maybe he's just hoping for some I'm scramble or some kind of uh, fortress, but uh, no chance. Rook gambit. <laughs> yeah, it happens to everyone. Okay, knight d6, knight f5. Soon we'll see the resignation. Rook gambit. Yes, uh, don't blunder your rooks. That's a very important thing. So Ali Reza won. So congratulations and uh, we still see uh, we have like uh, how many games remaining so two games remaining and uh, let's see if uh, levon can save this it's the uh, he managed to capture one pawn uh, and if he manages to capture another pawn he might save this game um i'm 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 not entirely sure uh, or about uh, jordan's technique here uh, because to me it seemed like he, around here it should be just completely winning um, and uh, what, what just happened actually queen e5 king f1 oh he just blundered uh, the b7 and uh, h5 so queen is attacking both the b7 and h5 right so he missed this move uh, I'm pretty sure that there are many ways to win here so it's not important and uh, after that of course um, this is going to be uh, a long game maybe we will the day is uh, not over yet yeah don't blunder rooks that's a that's a, that's an important point and pawn in this game but it's it's uh, very easy uh, to say that uh, hard to follow and the remain uh, other remaining game is between Sergei Karyakin against David Anton I think white is uh, white is a pawn up and uh, should be winning this just bring the king uh, either to e5 or even to bring it to b4 and capture the c3 uh, a4 pawn yeah queen e5 is good too uh, he will play f6 
Also, David Anton uh, blunders uh, when he's really low on time. Um, I mean, uh, he's a very good friend of mine, but uh, I saw several times uh, him uh, losing control. I mean, he plays really good chess, and uh, at one moment uh, he uh, he makes a really uh, simple blunder. Like yesterday, uh, he gave a whole rook. Is there any uh, odd timing uh, person watching the stream? I'm really curious. Like somebody's uh, on an uh, Indian time zone or even further. Yeah, this is a nice technique and uh, I don't think uh, Sergey will give any chance uh, here. Uh, he can just go queen d6 and maybe g5 and we will see nice technique here how to win uh, such games. Wow, 2.16 am here guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for stay staying and uh, supporting the stream and encouraging of course. Um, so yeah. Uh, we have a guy watching at 216, 215, okay. So we have a lot of Indians uh, and uh, it's really late. But thank you guys uh, staying up so late. Um, how do you train your concentration levels? Uh, I think, uh, of course, uh, I have been playing chess for a really long time. So some of the things uh, are already, you know... I, I, I kind of slowly got them um, but uh, you can always train some uh, kind of physical training and uh, meditation and breathing techniques you have so definitely okay so f6 uh, is these two moves are really nice so after queen e2 black was threatening queen h2 check and queen d6 and if uh, that's if white uh, moves his knight and uh, black was trying to uh, somehow uh, uh, force a perpetual check and uh, sergey nicely found this move i'm sure he missed queen e2 but uh, he was fortunate enough to have this move for f6 Queen h2, king e3, queen g1, king d2, and uh, king c3. Oh, it's not yet over. In fact, it's not over yet because after king c3, we have queen c7 check. And uh, move like king b2, you have queen b6. And then you take uh, queen, uh, eight, queen f6 and do not blunder king b3 because of queen b3. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's uh, let's uh, hope Dr. Chess Joker does not. And uh, make sure uh, you let us know what happened tomorrow morning when you wake up. That I am curious. Oh uh, yes, I do remember uh, the game, my game against uh, uh, Vidal from World Cup 2019. Uh, it's uh, theoretically a very important uh, variation. So uh, let's see uh, some moves have been played, um, but he played first king d3. Uh, and uh, so that includes bishop b5 check, very clever, king c3, queen c7, and now king b4. So uh, with the bishop on d7, we, uh, we had problems with uh, queen c4 check, queen b5. But now he, he was forced to take on f6 and uh, this doesn't seem right. Uh, I can just take queen h6, uh, queen g6 and he just blundered uh, king b5 or what? I think he just blundered king b5 because the knight is protected. Queen f5 and uh, king b5. Yeah, absolutely. It is uh, extremely difficult uh, to, you know, adjust to the time zones and 
okay yeah now i i do think uh, queen h5 queen e5 is what sergey will play because it's uh, it's the simplest without any risk uh, just place the uh, knight on d4 and uh, you know just push all these pawns uh, that's what we will see here although i think uh, king b5 should be winning i i feel but we'll see queen h5 queen e5 i know sergey yeah there you go Yeah, and now it's uh, time to resign because just uh, knight d4, h5, g5, h6, f4, and uh, both pawns uh, cannot move. And with bishop on d1, it's even worse. So bishop can't really move. Actually, you don't even need g5. g5. You just play h5, e6, h6, and e7, h7. Yeah. oh oh what is this what is this yeah it's a nice game by sergey yeah definitely but uh we we missed this moment but uh level one uh life is tough life is really tough what can i say uh i do not understand how uh how he missed this probably he was sh uh, short on time um but still like i don't know which uh, i mean it's there is no point in suggesting moves because the only move which you should not uh, the only square or let's say the uh, uh, square where you should not place the queen is f5 and he went to f5 queen h8 king g5 and queen h4 my goodness this is deserved win by level one nice job <laughs> but uh, there is no such thing as deserved or undeserved i feel that uh, he fought well until the very end and uh, he won so there is no looking back and uh, thinking i could play that or i could play this this is all uh you know it, it's pointless i i had a winning position and these things uh, are actually uh, unimportant so with this, uh, we conclude the last round of uh, today. And uh, can we have the standings after uh, 10 rounds? So queen f5 was played after 45 seconds of thinking. So yeah, this is a kind of blind uh, spot. Uh, it is possible that uh, he I, I don't know. There is no explanation. If you guys have some explanation, please enlighten me. So tomorrow also, yeah, tiredness. Yeah, uh, last last game of the day is always tiring. Definitely. Tomorrow is uh, very, very important for the qualifications and um, we we are definitely going to see a uh, lot of interesting battles for the uh, 7th and 8th. I do think that um, the top 4 is pretty safe, even uh, maybe 5th and 6th, but uh, of course uh, 5 games are remaining and uh, you know we, we witnessed what happened to Levon and had he lost this game, we uh, he would have been... Uh, just on four points and uh, that would be uh, like uh, uh, less than I'm um, not in top eight uh, tomorrow is uh, the third day of uh, the pre uh, prelims and uh, we will know who is going to qualify and uh, get ready with your uh, predictions and I want you guys to uh, predict uh, the top eight and uh, yeah that's all for today and uh, yeah and uh, can we have the 9 to 16 actually
yeah thank you uh thank you everyone uh, i do hope uh, you all enjoyed uh, enjoyed uh, the commentary it's uh, it's nice and i also want to thank the guest uh, guests who joined us um tomorrow uh, we'll be joined by my friend marcus ragar austrian number one and uh, we'll start uh 10 minutes before uh, do join a little bit early so that we can chat and if you ask have some questions we can talk because once the game starts it's uh, it's it's in uh, we have so many intense battles it's difficult to focus uh, so yeah we have uh, sergey karyakin uh, fighting back and uh, he shared uh, shared seven to nine place and uh, Actually, uh, Jan is uh, not far away. Timur is not far away. Mamet Yarov is still there. Uh, Nils is also there. So we uh, we have lot of uh, a lot of fight tomorrow, and uh, I'm expecting lot of nice battles. So okay, so see you tomorrow, and um, yeah. So there you go, guys. Uh, Navara will uh, join on uh, Tuesday uh, and uh, tomorrow uh, Marcus uh, Ragar will come but uh, I'm trying to get uh, more uh, more people and uh, more grandmasters to join so they can share their experiences and uh, you know each player has their own experience so uh, that's all for today and uh, have a great evening or a great night uh, hopefully your uh, mom will be fine <laughs> Uh, uh thank you very much and uh, yeah good night to some some people